And coming in at number 5 we have the Houghton Mansion. Built in the 1890s in North Adams, Massachusetts. For the mayor himself, Albert Charles Houghton, this neoclassical revival style mansion sits on 172 Church Street. A family man, Albert, was the president of Arnold Printworks, a prominent textile factory in North Adams. His wife, Cordelia, daughter Mary and himself had owned and lived on the property right up until the fatal car accident which took the lives of the family in 1914. On an early summer morning, Albert and his family accompanied by another family, Dr. and Mrs. Dutton and their daughter, and of course the family chauffeur himself, Mr. Witters, had decided to head out into the countryside for a leisurely drive. A drive that ultimately took their lives. Unfortunately, for everyone on that August 1st morning, after a steep turn, the car lost control and proceeded to screech off the road, resulting in a rolling fatal wreck. All the women in this tragedy losing their lives, with the men barely surviving from the multitude of injuries. On August 11th, just 10 days after the accident, without his wife and daughter, Albert mysteriously died in the home from what doctors think was a broken heart. It is said that three ghosts haunt the Houghton Mansion, including Albert himself, Albert's daughter Mary, and the driver, Mr. Witters. The mansion remained with the Houghton family until 1926 when Albert's daughter Florence and her husband sold the building to the Freemasons. This is when the spookiness really started happening. Through its multitude of use throughout the years, additions to this historic site were added on by the Masons, using it for ritual and spiritual purposes, making this story even weirder. Over over the years, there have been countless paranormal witnesses claiming that the ghosts roaming the halls of the basement, Mr. Witters himself, guilt ridden with the responsibility of the crash, and Mr. Witters took his own life shortly after returning home with injuries, and residents that have stayed at the site have claimed that the manly figure aimlessly rummaging through the basement is the driver himself. Among these claims have another spirit lurking in Mary's bedroom. It is said that overnighters have witnessed multiple bright lights and auras flying around the bedroom in the middle of the night. I wouldn't even step foot into this house, let alone set up camp and spend the night. No way. The Houghton Mansion remains a tourist attraction and hotspot for paranormal goers worldwide and to this day is one of the most haunted and mysterious sites in all of Massachusetts. Number 4. The Hoosick Tunnel The Hoosick Tunnel, from the Algonquin word place of stones and the Mohawk word forbidden, is a 4.75 mile active railroad tunnel in western Massachusetts that passes through the Hoosick Range, an extension of Vermont's Green Mountains and runs from Deerfield River in the town of Florida to the city of North Adams. The construction began in 1815 and ending in 1875 with a budget of 2 million, at the time the largest tunnel ever constructed, and it was later the result of taking lives of over 200 men during its construction entirety, earning it the nickname from locals, the Bloody Pit. This haunted, barren, 5 mile, completely enclosed stretch was subject to multiple accidents and deaths over the years, giving the tunnel its haunting history and reputation of being cursed itself. With the word forbidden, did the Mohawks know something that the workers didn't? Essentially, this cold, underground, pitch black hole became one of America's strangest gravesites, resulting in everything from mysterious gas leaks, dynamite explosions, roofs collapsing, and even mechanic failures resulting in a mass flood. For the past decades, there have been numerous paranormal activity witnesses who have documented strange events from police officers to the freight conductors themselves. Some of the reports over the last hundred years included numerous farmers and wagons ending up in different areas of the railroad, missing hours of time. The farmers had claimed that when spending time around the railroad and its tracks, that memory and confusion would always set in. Some residents have claimed that they have even been chased out of the tunnel by an unexpected freight train chugging along aggressively through the tunnel like a bat out of hell, and then vanishing. Numerous ghostly figures resembling workers roam the dark tunnel, and if that isn't scary enough, some people, including hearing the echoes and screams of even the workers who were buried alive under the rock, still holding their tools, or even seeing ghostly figures in pumping chambers where numerous men tirelessly making rafts not to drown. The Hoosick Tunnel remains one of the most visited and haunted places, marking it just one of the sites you'll probably never find me at. Just in 2020, the tunnel was yet again subject to a mysterious collapse resulting in months of repair. Yeah, I say stop fixing it and just let it be. Number 3 on this list is Gré Le Bains. This is a commune that is in the southeastern part of France. The reason why this town is so haunted is because of all the conflicts that have taken place there over the years. If you name any significant war that has happened within France, it's most likely that at some point or another, a battle was fought at this place. This has caused a lot of untimely death of soldiers and also the civilians who were living there. All of this death has left some spirits behind and made it so that this town 
is deeply haunted. Even though this is a town, the area that is most haunted seems to be located close to the castle at the top of this town. The reason that I say at the top is because this is a mountaintop village and the way that this town is laid out has the castle right at the zenith. Therefore everything is cascading down from this haunted castle that towers over the rest of the residents. There isn't one ghost who lays a rule to this town but a collection of ghostly spirits. It's said that if you walk around the castle at nighttime, then many voices will start to speak out of thin air. Shadows will dance on the walls as if someone is around you but once again there'll be nothing. People also report having a a deep sense of uneasiness when they're in this area and feel unwanted. The ghosts here don't sound as dangerous as some of the other ones, but I still don't recommend checking this place out. Number two on this list is Chateau de Blende la Tour. This is a castle that is located directly in the village of Blende la Tour. This castle certainly isn't the most ornate in nature. It looks to prioritize functionality over beauty. This was largely because its main use was during the 100 years war and the French wanted to make sure it wouldn't get captured by the British. This castle is very unique with its haunting. It's always haunted by one specific ghost which I'm going to get into, but on one particular day of the year this place goes off the rails with paranormal activity and it's this event that has given the castle the title as the most haunted castle in all of France. At midnight on All Saints Day, which is on November the 1st, it's said that a plethora of phantoms will fly out and circle around the tower of this castle. They will scream and wail and cause a major ruckus. People have also said that these wailings feel inherently sinister in nature, almost as if these ghosts are driving people away from this place. Reports have also said that chains can be heard smashing against the walls and screams from below in the tower are heard as if people are locked up there. This event only takes place on November 1st at midnight though and is now part of the lore and culture around this village. On a regular day, this castle isn't completely without ghostly apparitions though. The ghost of the master of the castle from the 11th century Century, walks throughout in a bloodied outfit. It's said that he was murdered with a dagger and that his spirit walks around to this day still holding that same dagger which killed him. Number one on this list is Chateau de Bonaguil. This castle is located in saint francois sur la mas and was built in the medieval ages. It's decently well kept considering how old it is today. As with most castles that were built around that time, this one played a critical role in the 100 years war. It's said that it was fought over multiple times and retaken by both sides multiple times as well. Aside from its deep history, reports of a potential haunting have run rampant all throughout France. In fact, people were so convinced that a spiritual presence was living here that a team went to go investigate it. This group of paranormal experts went in and made some startling discoveries. They said that when they got there, the thing that they noticed and detected the most was the sensation of somebody touching their shoulder, as if somebody was right behind you and had their hand just on one of your shoulders. This went hand in hand with a sensation of burning. Apparently the burning didn't have them in pure agony, but they were all reportedly uncomfortable for sure. The temperature changes didn't stop there either because it also got incredibly cold all of a sudden. Creepy noises, loud shouts, and a very guttural and deep moan that echoed throughout the castle were all things that this group had reported as well. Nobody knows who or what ghostly spirit is causing these occurrences, but it's clear that something isn't quite right about this French chateau. In at number five, we have Palmer House Hotel. This hotel is not only considered the most haunted place in Minnesota, but to some, it's considered the most haunted place in America. Located in South Center, the hotel has been visited by paranormal activity investigators from across the country. Recently, the ghost hunter from the Travel Channel, Ghost Adventures, even investigated the hotel. A brothel that went by the name of the South Center House occupied the current grounds of the Palmer Hotel. But the South Center House burned down in 1900, and the Palmer was built in its place the following year. The Palmer Hotel was established in 1901 and is notorious for its permanent ghost residence. The most reported ghost in the hotel is named Lucy, who resides in room 17. Legend has it that Lucy was an adult worker that frequented the past building of the Salk Center house. Though Lucy endured a terrible accident of losing her life at the hands of one of her clients. Even though this happened in the building, the Palmer Hotel can't seem to get rid of the spirit of Lucy. The ghost of Lucy is said to dislike men by 
by slamming the room door at male guests. Some reports her slamming the room door so hard it rattles the artwork on the wall and aggressively drops the temperature. During a recent investigation, a Chicago ghost hunting outfit allegedly recorded a temperature of negative 1 degrees Fahrenheit during their stay. Additionally, there was a couple staying at the hotel that reported a horrifying ghost encounter in room 17, where the wife woke up in the night and suddenly saw a lanky man dressed in 1920s clothing, standing at the foot of the bed. Other active areas include the bar in room 22, home to a spirit named Raymond, rumoured to be Lucy's manager. One employee of the Palmer House Hotel has confessed that their favourite paranormal experience is when guests complain about how noisy the people above them are, even though they are on the top floor. The ghost encounters and paranormal activity is so frequent at the Palmer Hotel that the current owner, Kelly Freezer, didn't believe in ghosts, but this changed when she became the owner of the hotel. In at number 4 we have the Soap Factory. The Soap Factory was at its peak during the soap boom of the 1880s, though now the factory has been left abandoned. The Soap Factory is one of the oldest factories in Minneapolis. While the process of making soap required lots of fats, lie in extremely hot temperatures, therefore it wasn't the most glorious or safest workplace in its day. Furthermore, the fats came from animal carcasses, thousands of them. The flow of blood and skin leaked into the Great River next door in the turn of the century. The building smell of flesh made it a hot spot for stray dogs that the city paid to be rounded up and sent to the end of their life. If that's not creepy enough, there are legends regarding malpractice taking place at the factory, with animal fats from local restaurants taken to be made into soap. And there were also rumours of child labour at the factory, but whatever you choose to believe, there is no denying that the site contains negative energy. Now the basement of the abandoned factory is used for haunted tours. The tour is so scary in fact that guests have to sign a waiver and have to be 18 to go on the tour. In at number 3 we have Avon Bridge. The Avon Bridge is known to be haunted by almost every local living in the area. It is a massive trip art railroad trestle spinning a rural road over White Lick Creek. The bridge is a fascinating landmark in Hendricks County with lots of legends and history surrounding it, some more sinister than others. There are a few historical facts about the bridge that we do know. It was built in 1906 off County Road 625, it was designed by W.M. Dunn and is still used today. Many haunted stories surround this bridge and the area surrounding it. One story claims that a mother had been walking on the tracks and fell to her death. The mother's wailing could be heard when you drive under the bridge. It's common for many locals to honk when driving under the bridge in an effort to muffle her screams. Another story is that a drunk rail worker slipped during construction and was buried alive in the wet cement. The tale is that when a train goes over the bridge, people claim to still hear his moaning. Many locals say that if you go near the bridge at night, you will hear moaning and can see a ghostly figure of a ghost or even two or three at a time. If you're traveling near the bridge on a hot summer day, you may be witness to the ghost tears streaming down the concrete. Many people don't even refer to it as the Avon Bridge. It's often called the Haunted Avon Bridge because of the number of accounts of ghost sightings and constant sounds of the moans and screams heard from the ghosts that haunt the bridge. In at number 2 we have James Allison Mansion. The James Allison Mansion was built for James Allison and it was a dream home, done in a grand design and style that exhibited James's wealth and importance. James was an important figure in the auto and plane industry, greatly helping in the development of cars and airplanes. He founded the Presto Light Company, which produced the first efficient headlight for early automobiles and was a founding partner in Carl Fisher's Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He also started Allison Engineering Company, which evolved and transformed into an aircraft engine make, known today as the Allison Division of Rolls Royce. James purchased the 65 acre estate and he and his wife Sarah built this glorious mansion, starting construction in 1911 and finishing in 1913. The massive home had an elevator, a billiard room, an indoor pool in the basement, a breakfast room, a library, a grand kitchen, and even pumped in ice water. Fifteen years after the Allisons built their forever home, James then fell in love with his secretary and he divorced his wife Sarah in 1928. Only a month later, James married this former employee Lucille Musset. However, James contracted a fatal case of pneumonia and died shortly after marrying his second wife at the age of 56. In 1936, the estate went up for sale and that same year it was bought by Sisters of St. Francis of Oldenburg. The former Allison home became a home for the college's library, administrative offices, classrooms and sleeping quarters for the sisters. There have been many things seen and heard throughout the years since it became a college. There was a girl who had drowned in the pool in the basement and James's untimely 
death in the home, both people could be haunting this mansion to this day. It's said that people who pass through a sudden accident or a bout of illness, sometimes their spirits hang around, perhaps unaware that they have died or not wanting to accept their deaths. And this is the case for both the little girl and James. The entity of a little girl is often seen throughout the mansion. There are strange cries that are heard from the basement. In the attic, an object seem to move by themselves and can completely disappear. There is another entity seen and could possibly be more than one, and they like to take keys and objects and move them to odd places. The library in particular is often completely rearranged, like the books and furniture. And finally, in at number one, we have French Lick Springs Hotel. Nestled in the small resort town of French Lick sits the massive French Lick Springs Hotel. This legendary hotel was constructed in 1845 and is a crown jewel of the southern Indiana town. But there's more to this resort than meets the eye. This Indiana hotel is known to be one of the most haunted places in the state. Thomas Taggart was a mayor at the time and purchased the hotel in 1888. After purchasing the hotel, he added luxurious furnishings, marble floors, and built two championship golf courses. During this time, Taggart became the Democratic National Chairman, and the hotel became the unofficial headquarters of the Democratic National Party. In 1931, Franklin Roosevelt visited the hotel because of its Democratic standing and won the presidency a mere year later. Over the years, the hotel and the work Taggart put into it made it one of the most prominent hotels in the area and even ran the West Baden Springs Hotel out of the business. Unfortunately, in 1916, Taggart passed away, but according to local legend, his spirit has never left the building. Taggart died in 1916, but that hasn't stopped rumors of sightings of this famous hotel owner. Guests and employees frequently encounter strange and paranormal activity throughout the hotel, and they believe it is caused by Taggart himself. Many spot his ghostly figure near the service elevator and can pick up a strong scent of pipe tobacco. Others claim they witnessed his spirit riding down the hallway on a horse and making noise inside the ballroom. Some hear noises and others encounter his ghost, though usually both don't occur at the same time. Not only is Taggart's ghost living in the hotel, but there are also rumors of a former bellhop that lingers around the hotel. Many believe that he was a current employee until they saw old photos of him hanging on the wall or were told no bellhops were on duty when people had encountered him. Employees and guests say that it's pretty hard not to encounter some sort of activity when you're in the hotel, and due to the vast amount of paranormal sightings are why it's considered by many to be the most haunted place in Indiana and one of the most haunted places in all of the United States. In at number 5 we have Whispers Estate. The Whispers Estate was built around 1894 and between 1899 and 1901 is when Dr. George and Sarah White moved in. George was a successful physician and ran his practice from their home. The two adopted many orphaned children and unfortunately several passed away in the house over the years. Some of the children they took in were troubled. Many of them passed away in the bedrooms and other areas of the home, and even some of Dr. White's patients have been said to have also passed while in the home. Dr. White practiced in the home for over 25 years, so it's probable but unknown how many over the years had passed in the home. In the early 2000s, the home underwent renovations and a lot of bizarre activity began. Many claim that lights would flicker on and off, footsteps would be heard stomping around on the second floor, and as time went on, the activity escalated. To this day, people reserve time to come and experience all this paranormal activity, and are encouraged to write down any experiences they had while in the home. And these accounts are posted to the Whispers Estate's official Facebook page. You can go through the page and find creepy photos people have taken that show demonic figures, ghosts like creatures, and even orbs. It's also pretty common for the guests to be scratched up by unseen fingernails or touched by an unseen hand. The estate earned the Whispers moniker after the numerous guests that experienced somebody whispering in their ear, somebody they couldn't see. Due to the amount of people who have passed at the home in its early days, it's like there are a number of different spirits that haunt the estate to this day. The Whispers estate is known as the fourth most haunted house in the United States, but many who have visited believe it to be the most haunted house in the entire country. In at number four, we have Rhodes Hotel. The Rhodes Hotel was established in 1893 and was named after the first owners, Clara and Newton Rhodes. The youngest child in the Rhodes family, Everett, passed in one of the second story bedrooms after contracting tuberculosis at 18 years old. Soon after their daughter's death, Newton unfortunately died and it's 
believed he had died inside of the house. After Newton's passing, Clara turned the house into a dual brothel and speakeasy. It's said that one of the ladies of the night, Sarah, still haunts her bedroom tucked behind the stairs on the second floor. After Clara's death, the family home was opened as a hotel in the late 1800s and was meant to house those flocking to East Central Indiana during the natural gas boom. It's even believed that John Dillinger and Al Capone stopped at the hotel for a stay after hitching a ride on a train to Indiana. Not only did the family pass in their home, but a preacher by the name of Lester Poor supposedly hanged himself in the attic during the time when the home was converted to a hotel. But many believe his death could have been a murder. Due to the hotel's rich history, many locals and visitors have experienced paranormal activity and everyone in the town knew that many spirits that passed in the building still haunt it to this day. The hotel closed its doors in 1937 and the property remained in the Rhodes family hands but sat empty for more than 30 years. The hotel and its contents were eventually auctioned off and it landed on the National Register of Historic Places and the hotel saw three owners before the Haley's took it over for restoration. The Rhodes Hotel was purchased by Clint and Linda Haley in 1995 and they heard rumours about the haunting of the hotel but this didn't phase them. They were more worried about the work they would have to do to restore the home. The Haley's claim that they didn't encounter any paranormal activity but many find that hard to believe. The hotel was up for sale again in 2017 when a man by the name of Couch took it over for his charity. Couch had launched the Lost Limbs Foundation four years earlier which raised funds for prosthetic limbs for children. To this day Couch's charity has owned and run the hotel. Not only had it been named among Indiana's most haunted places, but the hotel is consistently booked for private and paranormal investigations. The overnight investigation tickets can get up to $200 and this hotel attracts people from across the country. There have been many investigators that believe there is extensive activity in this old hotel and people have captured a figure like shadow moving across the living room curtains with the use of night vision cameras. Most commonly people hear whispers and the second floor creaking when no one is inside. Unlike the Haley's, Couch said he's seen and heard supernatural happenings in the hotel since moving onto the property in 2017. He's heard footsteps on the staircase, the property camera has turned off randomly and picked up voices before the footage flickers back on. Once while hosting an investigation, Couch said he witnessed one of many Victorian dolls left behind from a previous owner jump off of its chair. Number three, Boston Common. Most common fact about the common, one of the most haunted places in Boston. That rhymed really weird, didn't it? If you're out for a walk and feel the need to brush up on your American history, then you can be sure to either see the ladies by the trees or the Patriot men rushing the battlefront. Well, what's left behind from them at least. The Boston Common had a multi-purpose identity through the centuries. Originally as a farm and then trading grounds for the British and American military, the Common was used as a camp during the American Revolutionary War. 20 minutes to load these old muskets and a lot of people dying. It was also used for public hangings up until 1817, most of which were from the large oaks, which were eventually all replaced with gallows in 1769. These grounds held weight during the witch trials and made a perfect open concept park that a spectacle could be enjoyed at. These people were sick. This place has seen its fair share of violence. The 350 year old park is full of graves, ghosts, and gallows. It's almost impossible to know just how many bodies lay underneath the park like a cesspool of unmarked graves from many different eras. Most buried here were low class sick or died in battle. Oh, and of course were hanged in front of the public. This place is home to many dark shadows, cold spots, and the occasional smell of gunpowder. Next time you're in Boston, swing by one of America's oldest and fullest cemeteries and see if you can see anything for yourself. Number two, the Danvers State Hospital. The Danvers State Hospital, or also known as the Danvers State Insane Asylum, was a psychiatric hospital located in Danvers, Massachusetts. It was built in 1874 and opened in 1878 on the isolated site in rural Massachusetts. Which, fun fact, the judge who preceded the Salem witch trial lived on. That's bad karma already, isn't it? Despite being included in the National Registry for Historical Places in 1984, the majority of the building was demolished in 2007. At a cost of 1.5 million at the time, the hospital originally consisted of two main center buildings with housing for the administration with four radiating wings on each side. The outermost wards were reserved for the most hostile patients. This was a prominent location where medications were being tested by the government and the favored lobotomy was being fleshed out. When shock therapy failed to control the population, lobotomies started and in 1939, the population of the hospital swelled to almost over 2,400 patients. A total of 278 people died at the hospital that same year. Neurology experts often call Danvers the birthplace of the prefrontal lobotomy. Ouch. 
Visitors to the hospital during these years reported lobotomy patients wandering around staring blankly at nothing, unaware of who they were or what they were doing. Large budget cuts in the 60s played a major role in the progression of closing the Danvers State Hospital, and with nicknames like Hell Hill Hospital and Lunatic Asylum, the hospital began slowly closing its facilities by 1985. The original hospital wards were closed and abandoned soon after. During the 80s, reports began to filter out of the hospital about missing teenage patients. The stories of ghostly figures and shadows in the windows were thriving. Are the ghosts of the lobotomized patients still aimlessly walking the realms of this now demolished hospital? What do you think? And number one, the Bridgewater Triangle. Just a couple miles south of Boston is one of the most interesting and bizarre places in Massachusetts. I chose this as the number one spot due to not only the paranormal ghostly figures that have been seen across the vast plains, but 200 miles of connected weird events that will definitely catch our attention. It's named from the triangle shape, the paranormal events and phenomenon that occurs within these mapped lines includes as many as orbs, UFOs, Bigfoots, fairies, skinwalkers, alien hybrids, you name it, it's there. Well, possibly there. The towns of Raynham, Brockton, Norton, and Totten are all subject to a universal head scratcher. In the 70s, there of course was a surge of UFO witnesses, at the same time several Bigfoot. Huh, that's interesting. Massachusetts just keeps getting stranger and stranger, doesn't it? Huge humanoid creatures, motherships, and landed UFOs have also been spotted and reported within this 200 square foot mile radius. Do you think this place is like a Skinwalker Ranch type of place? Maybe some motherships are trying to just reconnect with the Wi-Fi upstairs? I don't know. Whatever it is, the Bridgewater Triangle has been home to numerous documentaries and folklore and attracts spooky goers each year with its variety of paranormal activity. Number five, Hockamock Swamp. Already sounds pretty scary in itself. Something about swamps, you know what I mean? During the 17th century, the Hockamock Swamp was used as a fortress by the Wampanoag people, the predominant band of natives in the area, against invasion by the early British settlers. It played a landscape role in King Philip's War as a strategic base of which to launch assault with nearby English settlements. During the 18th and 19th centuries, settlers deemed the swamp to be useless, barren land, and it didn't really do much besides sit there and just kind of take up space. They attempted to drain it and convert it into a profitable farmland, however, nothing really grew. Hmm. The natives of the region placed a much higher value on the swamp, however, for centuries. The first people had relied on hunting food there, riddled with fauna, and the swamp had gained an important legend and folklore among them as being a place where many things meet. They named it Hakomak, the Algonquin term meaning place where spirits dwell. And that's exactly what people say they do dwell there. What makes this swamp so haunted is the different purposes it was used for. A cesspool for bones of the fallen. Some places are just more susceptible to violence and death over the years. And that reputation of spirits lingering is what's so heavy and cold about this location. Much of the swamp served a dual purpose as a sacred burial ground as well. The Hakomak is occasionally referred to as the home of the Hobomak. The Wampanoag people worshipped and feared Hobomak, the chief deity of death and disease. Hobomak, composed of human souls of the dead, was known to congregate in areas like the Hockamock Swamp, thus the term and lore stuck. Yep, just a giant mud monster swallowing souls. Charming. There are many stories and legends that have become associated with this swamp and are even connected to the number one on my list. It remains a place of mystery and fear and apparently good frog catching. Number four, Lowell Cemetery. Lowell Cemetery is a cemetery located in Lowell, Massachusetts. Founded in 1841 and located on the banks of the Concord River, the cemetery is one of the oldest garden cemeteries in the country, making it a perfect place for violence and an eternity of soul searching. Many of Lowell's wealthy industrialists are buried here under lavish Victorian tombstones. Visitors have claimed that this is one of Massachusetts' most haunted cemeteries. What makes a haunted cemetery more haunted than another haunted cemetery, you know? Is there like a competition or like a quota or something? Just gotta keep the numbers up. What is it? I feel like every local claims their cemetery is the oldest and most haunted. And this brings me to our fair maiden here, the mysterious witch, Bonnie. A popular meeting place amongst the local teens at night for some scares and some screams, the statue of a woman with her arms outstretched on a rectangular tomb, her hands clutching a veil that falls down behind her body as though it were a cloak caught in the wind. Her eyes lay cold, staring at the heavens. Under her left eye, a black tear. Paranormal researchers have claimed that the statue holds more of an electromagnetic current and strange things can be seen in front and around the statue, making it seem like it's moving from time to time. Creepy. 
There is local lore that if you leave a coin or ribbon on the statue, then you'll get good luck, and in return, if you steal or take the items from the statue, the haunting whispers of bad karma will follow. Although research shows that this gravesite holds no actual sinister history, the ghostly sightings surrounding it are a hot spot within the cemetery. I bet at night under the moonlight this woman could be very terrifying. Number 3. The USS Salem Planes, trains and automobiles. Well, almost. A big boat. The USS Salem, a heavy cruiser built for World War II in 1945 was originally built for action. Its bold, aggressive architecture was one of the last as it was more of a bluff to its opponents than actually a hero of war. In May 1949, war departments handed the Salem's helm to Captain J.C. Daniel himself. The ship was built and updated with what was then the latest military tech and weapons, and it was meant to strike fear in whom Ever or whatever was in her way. Although the ship wasn't used in any action during World War II, it acted as a flagship, training operation, and main purpose as a threat to the naval enemy. It wasn't until the USS Salem had responded to the 1953 Ionian earthquake, or also known as the Great Kefalonia earthquake, as it hit the southern Ionian islands of Greece on August 12th, devastating the entire area. The USS Salem landed on Greek shores and acted as an improvised hospital and morgue, giving it its famous name, the Sea Witch. The ship was decommissioned shortly after its rescue and lays in Boston's harbor as a tourist attraction from all of its dark history. Some of the paranormal activities that arise on the ship include the Burning Man, who smells of rank death and can be seen in the mess hall where the bodies have been stored. Another famous apparition on the ship is the ghost girls who lurk the halls of the ship. Little ghostly figures can be seen and felt on the legs of tour goers. Some people claim that the ship is even home to hellhounds, an aggressive pack of ghostly creatures that roam the ship growling and scratching at closed doors. Yeah, the next time my dog scratches at my door, She's going up for adoption, I'm sorry. Number two, the Lizzie Borden House. This quaint bed and breakfast located at 232 2nd Street is home to one of America's most haunted and mysterious homes, the Lizzie Borden House. Gets its haunt from an unsolved murder of Lizzie Borden in 1892. One of the most infamous true crime figures known for her murdering of her father and stepmother with several blows to the head with a hatchet. Oof, ouch. Although acquitted, the killings remain unsolved to this day. This case earned notoriety and much that the popular local children's rhyme had been linked to this death. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. That is horrible. On August 4th, 1892, Lizzie's stepmother of 27 was struck 19 times while her father Andrew was hit 11. Although Lizzie Borden was acquitted and found not guilty, the dark history draws in crowds every night for its nightly tour of the premises. The Lizzie Borden room, the infamous room where all of the murders took place, is the most requested and most popular for paranormal overnighters. And not only can you enjoy a lovely inclusive breakfast to yourself, but the nightly house tour, ghost tour, and ghost hunt attracts fans of horror every night of the year. Yeah, that's terrifying. And there's a jingle to it. I don't like that at all. And coming in at number one, the Salem Witch Trials. We can't talk about haunted places in Massachusetts if we're not gonna bring up the witch trials. And I'm not talking about Sabrina the Teenage Witch Witches or anything of cute of that nature. These famously documented witch trials need no introduction and unfortunately lays way to one of the most horrific events based in truth. The sight of mass hysteria and hangings of supposed witches took place here and occurred in colonial Massachusetts between 1692 and 1692. More than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft or better known back then as the devil's magic and 20 were ultimately executed. Eventually the colony admitted the trials were a mistake and compensated the families of those convicted. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. I just thought uh, when you sneezed, you didn't say bless you, so I just, I already don't like you, so I figured you were a witch, I'm really sorry. Since then, the story of the trials has become famous in paranoia and injustice, and it continues to baffle researchers to this day. We all know the famous play written by American playwright Arthur Miller in 1953, The Crucible, depicting the mass hysteria and drama during these trials. This was the perfect time if you didn't like someone that a strategic and untimely sinister accusation led to the demise of thy neighbor. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. Who else don't I like? I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil. Abigail, end of act one. Since the start of the trials and hysteria in North America, other European countries shortly followed with their own mass witch hunts, resulting in somewhere between 40,000 and 60,000 tried and executed for witchcraft. That's a lot of broomsticks. The Salem Witch Trials of Salem, Massachusetts is still one of the world's biggest hotspots for mystery and paranormal story. 
Number 5 on this list is Abbaye de Mortemer. This abbey is located in the French town of Mortemer in the Normandy region and has a deep history to it. In the mid 1500s this was a prosperous area filled with a bunch of monks. It was a growing town that was one of the most successful in the region. This didn't last too long though. When the 1700s struck, things changed quickly. The men who were funding this town grew greedy and cared little for the people that were living there. The abbey itself started to deteriorate and the monks began moving out. Soon it was a shell of its former self and only had four monks that it housed. This wasn't the end though because in 1789 this abbey saw the worst horror of its history. The French Revolution was at its height and sweeping its way through France. Religion was completely out of favour and that meant the four monks that were living there were also out of favor. When the revolutionaries got to this location and found these monks, they didn't hold back. They took them into the cellar of this abbey and brutally massacred all four of them with no provocation. People think that this was one of the main incidents that caused this place to become one with the spirits. Since then, many ghostly sightings have been reported at this spot. One of the most famous stories was in World War II. A British paratrooper landed in the forest nearby and was spotted by the Germans. He thought he was doomed for until a monk appeared out of nowhere and guided him to safety. It's believed that this is one of the spirits of the dead monks still trying to help those in desperate need. One of the most famous ghostly legends is the woman in white who wanders the grounds. This ethereal being floats through the area and was even photographed once before. Her origin is currently unknown but it seems that after the monks were killed this area became home to not only their spirits but many. Werewolves, goblin cats, and other demonic things have also been spotted here. This place is deeply haunted, and even though that one paratrooper was saved by a ghost, I think that's the exception rather than the rule, and for that reason, I still wouldn't recommend going here. Number 4 on this list is the Chateau de Brissac. This chateau in France is located in the Loire River Valley south of the village of Angers in France. It's a very beautiful chateau and extremely unique because it's actually a mix of two different chateaus. In the early 11th century an initial castle was built on the land but then several hundred years later in the 15th century the land was taken over by the Duke of Brissac who had his own vision for the space. He tore down most of the castle except for the twin medieval towers and then built around those so you get this very interesting style of chateau. This chateau is also apparently the tallest in all of France. The great beauty of this castle and unique architecture aren't the only things that distinguish it though because it's also one of the most haunted. An expert on the castle named Wesley McDermott gives great insight into the entity haunting this building where he says, A double murder that occurred sometime in the 15th century within the walls of the castle has resulted in one of the more popular ghosts of the Chateau de Brissac, that of the La Dame there or Green Lady. The current residents, the Duke of Brissac and his family have become accustomed to her roaming the rooms but she has scared many a guest. She's often seen in the tower room of the chapelle wearing her green dress. What's most terrifying however is her face. If she looks at you, you'll see that her face has gaping holes where her eyes and her nose should be resembling a corpse. As well as her sighting, her moans are often heard throughout the castle in the early hours. After researching this, I found that Wesley was correct and there is no end to the stories and encounters people have had with this green lady. I honestly do recommend going to this castle to look at its beautiful exterior. Going inside though, is something that I wouldn't do. In at number 3 we have First Avenue. Located in downtown Minneapolis, the building which is now home to this nightclub has a rounded front, is painted black and has white stars on its side walls with the names of many of the musical talents who have done shows in one of these three event rooms found inside. Before it was famous for being a nightclub, the First Avenue was a Greyhound Depot. The First Avenue legend has to do with the building's former self, the Great Art Deco Greyhound Bus Center that opened on 7th Street in 1937. The story goes that a young woman went to the station to meet her boyfriend who was returning home from World War II. When she was informed that he had died in combat, she ran into the restroom and ended her life due to heartbreak. In recent years, multiple First Avenue staffers have reported seeing a ghost in the washroom. The ghost has been reportedly described as a woman always in a green army jacket and sometimes seen dancing at the club along with other ghosts. Legend says that many homeless people died in the bus station as well and they can be seen dancing with the women. There have been reports of another spirit haunting the nightclub. The Staffers nicknamed this spirit Slip 
therapy. While this particular ghost is said to make a balloon appear from nowhere, which then floats up and down the staircase on its own. Dave Schrade, a paranormal investigator, visited First Avenue to assess the paranormal activity in the building multiple times and has concluded that the building is indeed haunted by many spirits, indicating that the record room is the most active area of the site. While DJs that have played at the venue have reported frequently hearing strange noises through their headphones, such as growls, voices, and screams, other performers report their equipment being pushed off stage with no explanation. In at number two, we have Schmidt Brewery. Schmidt Brewery became the largest in Minnesota by 1860, producing 1,200 barrels annually and shipping them as far south as Tennessee. It was restructured as the St. Paul Brewing Company in 1898 before being sold to Jacob Schmidt soon after in 1900. Since its opening in 1884, many ghost hunters have visited the Schmidt Brewery to experience some of the many rumored paranormal activities. The brewery has been the site of many constant, unexplainable instances, from fires to people losing their lives to terrible accidents. This place has seen a lot of scary sights. While the victims of these events linger around to haunt the grounds of the brewery, even though the building is now used as an artist's loft, that doesn't take away the scary history of the Schmidt Brewery. While most of the ghosts that haunt the grounds of the old brewery have to do with ordinary brewery workers dying in terrible accidents, in 1896, two workers lost their lives in an explosion. Furthermore, in 1902, a worker fell down an unmarked elevator shaft. Additionally, in 1904, Matthew Colo, a worker whose job was to light gas lamps in the brewery, lost his life from inhaling flames. Schmidt Brewery has been a St. Paul haunt since 1855 for more than a couple of reasons. When owner Jacob Schmidt took down the original North Star Brewery sign, replacing it with his namesake, Jacob Schmidt Brewing Company. The entire brewery burned down a year later in 1900. Plenty of other bad luck would also follow on the grounds of the brewery, suspected due to the tragic death of many workers of the brewery. And finally, in at number one, we have Four Pals Restaurant. Known as the most haunted restaurant in Minnesota, the Four Pals has a tragic story. Located in St. Paul, Four Pals was a high end restaurant located in Irvine Park, and the restaurant is a beautiful Victorian mansion. Sadly, though, the restaurant is now permanently closed. The dark stories about Four Pals Restaurant hint that the historic mansion is seriously haunted. As the story goes, back in the late 1800s, Joseph Forpau had an affair with the mansion's maid, Molly. It was not long before his wife discovered this relationship and love for Mary. Therefore, the wife became extremely jealous of the servant and assigned Molly to do chores that would keep her away from the bedrooms and away from Joseph. Molly became pregnant and Joseph ended the affair, but Molly was so distraught about the whole situation that she ended her life. According to reports, she ended her life in the attic. Joseph was upset when he heard the news about Molly that he figured he could not stay in the house where his beloved died. One day he went out for a walk and ended his life as well. Since then, restaurant guests and employees have reported creepy sightings of a woman dressed in 1800s attire, lights turning off and on by themselves, and strange noises coming from the attic. In one case, the disturbances were so chaotic that it led to an investigation by the St. Paul police, whose canine dog refused to enter the attic. It is said that Joseph and Molly both haunt four pals, but many guests have said Molly is more active spirit. People say they have seen the two walking around the dining area, but Molly bangs on walls and smashed his glasses. Some people say they can smell her lavender perfume. That being said, Mr. Fourpower is also sometimes seen and his ghost has been reported wearing a dark waistcoat, silk vest, pinstripe trousers, and a derby hat. He can be seen going to the basement at which time the lights flicker and shuffling noises are heard. He roams the house and has been caught on film many times. The former staff of the restaurant have also reported on many occasions when they would go floor by floor turning off lights as they close down for the night. Then when the staff members get in their cars to leave, they'll notice the top floor light is on. Nevertheless, if the restaurant is haunted, the story of Mr. Fourpow and Molly is one of the most devastating to date. Coming in at 5, West Virginia Penitentiary. Opened all the way back in 1875, the West Virginia Penitentiary in Moundsville is said to be one of the most haunted prisons in the states. The first building constructed on the site was the North Wagon Gate, which was made with hand-cut sandstone. The state used prison labor during the process and work continued on this first phase up until 1876. Following completion, the prison consisted of the North Wagon Gate, North and South cell blocks, a kitchen, dining area, hospital, and chapel, as well as a four-story tower connecting the two administration buildings. The prison also included space for female inmates and personal living quarters for the warden and his family. Once the prison opened, it housed 251 male inmates, including some who helped construct the prison where they were incarcerated. The condition of the prison worsened throughout the years, and the facility was eventually ranked as one of the top 10 most violent correctional facilities. On Wednesday, November 7, 1979, 15 prisoners escaped from the prison, one of them being Ronald Turney Williams, who was serving time for murdering Sergeant
Sergeant David Lilly of the Beckley Police Department. He managed to steal a guard's weapon and reach the streets where he encountered 23 year old off duty state trooper Philip S. Kesner, who was driving past with his wife. Kesner attempted to take action against Williams, but he was shot in the process. The prison was home to riots, fires, and nearly 100 executions during its time in operation. To this day, visitors have reported sightings of phantom inmates and a shadow man wandering the premises, as well as unexplained voices and cult spots. You can take tours around this haunted penitentiary and even view the electric chair dubbed Old Sparky. For you brave souls out there, you can also do an overnight session if you dare. Coming in at 4, North Bend Rail Trail Tunnel Number 19. North Bend Rail Trail is located in Ritchie County in West Virginia and is a favourite for hikers, cyclists, and horseback riders traversing the 72 mile long trail. However, proceed with caution if you wind up in the area, particularly around Tunnel Number 19, also known as the Silver Run Tunnel. History goes that on one foggy evening in 1910, an engineer spied a young woman in a flowing white dress standing on the tracks. He brought the train to a stop, but when he searched for the woman, she had vanished. He wasn't the only one to spot her either, many of his predecessors had as well. No one quite knows the origin of the woman in white, although some bones were found under a house near the tunnel. Some people say you can still spot her. Now, those who explore the tunnel are advised to bring a flashlight even during the day, with the tunnel being over 1,376 feet long, which is beyond sunlight's reach. You have been warned. In at number three, we have Bobby Spring Ranch. Located just outside the glitz of the Las Vegas Strip, sits a plot of land that takes visitors to another time and place. That land is known as the haunted Bonnie Springs Ranch. Originally built in 1843, the ranch was used as a stopover for the wagon trains going to California. While in 1958, the ranch was renovated and opened to the public as a tourist attraction with stables, a restaurant, and a petting zoo. Later, a functioning saloon, shops, wax museum, wedding chapel and replica schoolhouse were added to the ranch. There is not only one ghost that roams the ranch, as it's known there are multiple spirits that reside at the Bobby Springs. But one of Bonnie Spring Ranch's most commonly cited ghosts is that of a little girl. Her spirit is mostly cited playing in and around the town schoolhouse before suddenly disappearing. The nearby merry-go-round has also been known to turn on its own unexplainably, where many believe it could be the spirit of the little girl playing on the ride. Another active area of Bonnie Springs Ranch for paranormal activity is the Wax Figure Museum. This small tunnel like maze leads guests through a creepy history display, which literally comes to life for some. Many have claimed to witness these wax figurines move on their own and appear as though they are inhaling breath. The ranch's management even had to allegedly nail the displays down as they were moving out of position so frequently. The final and most evil of Bonnie Springs Ranch's hauntings are found within the Opera House. It is here that a darker, more negative energy is present. The spirit takes the form of a dark shadow figure that follows people through the area and has even been captured in photographs, disturbing the EVPs have also been caught in this area. In at number 2 we have Nevada's Governor's Mansion. From the outside, the Nevada State Governor's Mansion is a grand two story building. While inside on the first floor, you'll find the grand entry hall, the reception room and the formal dining room. Though don't let its appearance fool you, as there are spirits haunting its grounds. The Governor's Mansion was completed in 1909 and the Governor Denver S. Dickerson was the first governor to occupy the residence. His daughter June is the first and only child ever born in the governor's mansion. The mansion is said to be haunted by June and her mother Una. Since their passing in the mansion, there has continually been paranormal activity reports in the household. The mansion is said to be haunted because former employees at the mansion have reported hearing cold wind blowing from an antique grandfather clock that also swings open periodically without assistance. Former First Lady Sandy Miller's brother in law is said to have seen the apparition of a woman in a white gown. The woman is believed to be Una Dickerson dress for the mansion's opening in 1909. And finally, in at number one, we have Silver Queen Hotel. Located in Virginia City, Nevada, the Silver Queen Hotel was constructed in 1876. This makes it the oldest hotel in Virginia City. However, the Silver Queen Hotel is known for much more than just being the oldest hotel in Nevada. The main level of the property features an authentic 1870s saloon with one of the largest single piece wooden bar counters and bar backs you'll ever see. The Silver Queen is also a popular destination for weddings, as there is a historic chapel on site. Of all of the allegedly haunted places in Nevada, paranormal experts tend to agree that Virginia City, as an entire city, is the most collectively haunted place in Nevada, especially as staff guests 
deaths and countless paranormal investigators are certain that ghosts roam the 138 year old property. One of the most active spirits that haunt the hotel is Rosie. Rosie was an adult entertainment worker who dealt business in the Silver Queens. Though during the late 1800s in room 11, Rosie lost her life. Her story remains mysterious, but Rosie is said to have never left the Silver Queen, making countless appearances in the decades following her passing. Even though the entire hotel is carpeted, guests have often reported loud steps on a wooden floor, rattling doorknobs, the sound of voices, or even the sight of Rosie herself at the top of a long staircase where she has been spotted lingering. Other visitors report on TripAdvisor and Yelp describing the loud noises at night and an unexplainable sense of eeriness. One guest had a more terrifying encounter in the hotel as they described getting chased down the hallway in the middle of the night by a ghost. Coming in at number five, we have Mizpah Hotel. Named after the Mizpah mine, the hotel was opened in 1905. The hotel is considered a historic beacon of central Nevada's mining boom that came and went and left behind a trail of ghost towns and is located between Las Vegas and Reno in Tonopah, Nevada, which has a population of around 2,000. Due to it being a Originally opened at the height of Tonopah's silver boom, it hosted celebrities and wealthy investors. The famous celebrities that have been linked to the hotel are Howard Hughes, Jack Dempsey, and Wyatt Earp. Additionally, at the time, it was the tallest building in Nevada and was one of the first luxury hotels in the state. At the time that it was built, it was heralded as a sign of Tonopah's prosperity, as it was displayed on newspaper headlines, proudly displayed in the Mizpah during the area. However, over time, several accidents and crimes took place on the hotel hotel grounds, making the hotel need to close and reopen several times, most recently in 2011 after being closed and boarded up for 10 years. The hotel is considered haunted and is known for the story of the Lady in Red. The Lady in Red was a high class adult worker who lived in the top floor of the Mizpah. She sadly lost her life at the hands of a man in the hotel by her lover. Her lover wanted her to give up her work for him, though she did not want to do that. Due to the disagreement, she sadly met her fate in the hotel. The room where paranormal activity is most active would be the room where she lost her life, and it's considered the Lady in Red's room. And it is the very room you can now book and stay in on the top floor. There have been reports from guests and staff of the Lady in Red being seen riding the elevator, while other reports of hearing her whisper in the guests and staff is. Additionally, she is known to leave pearls in the bed of guests that she is fond of. That being said, the Lady in Red is not the only spirit that haunts the hotel as there is a nameless soldier who died in the hotel and unfortunately they never were able to be identified. It has been reported that the soldier haunts the third and fourth floors. Guests have also reported of a force tugging at the back of their shirts and unexplained giggling, while others report the inability to sleep because they felt as if someone was standing next to the bed watching them all night. The Mizpah Hotel has been named the most haunted hotel in America and for a good reason. In at number four we have Goldfield Hotel. Located in Goldfield, Nevada, you'll find the Goldfield Hotel. The hotel opened in 1902 and formed a large crowd of visitors and guests in its early years of operation. In its early years, the Goldfield Hotel was visited by politicians, bankers, and gunslingers. Built in the heart of the town, the Goldfield Hotel was one of the most sought out buildings in Goldfield and was known as the finest hotel between San Francisco and Denver. The man behind the hotel was George Wingfield, a successful and wealthy banker, mining magnate, and joint owner of the booming Goldfield Consolidated Mines Company. However, as with many boom towns, Goldfield's mines eventually dried up, causing the population and stream of hotel guests began to dwindle. The hotel went through a series of owners, from private owners to the US Army during World War II, and now is owned by Red Robert's son. The Goldfield Hotel was once the most spectacular hotel in the state of Nevada, but today operates under a different notion as one of the most haunted places in Nevada, if not the entire United States. The most known ghost story is of a woman named Elizabeth who was speculated to be George Wingfield's mistress. Elizabeth became pregnant with Wingfield's child and to protect his marriage, George paid her to stay away, though he grew fearful that he would get exposed for cheating on his wife. Therefore, George ultimately locked her in room 109 throughout her entire pregnancy. Wingfield fed her food and water to keep her alive until the child was born, but then Elizabeth disappeared altogether and was never to be seen again. Many guests touring the Goldfield Hotel have claimed to see Elizabeth's ghost, and some even claim to hear crying, notably calling out for her child. George's ghost is also said to haunt the hotel, with guests reporting to the lingering smell of cigars and ashes being left on the floor. Those aren't the only ghosts that haunt the Goldfield Hotel, as other spirits of those who lost their lives on the grounds of Goldfield have been reported to be seen 
lurking in the halls and lobby of the old hotel. Number three on this list is the Driskill Hotel. This hotel is located in Austin and has a very haunted history. Thrillist says, you might not think the Driscoll is haunted based on its clean and recently renovated interior or its brief, stunning appearance on AMC's Texas brimmed drama, The Suns, but it's loaded with plenty of stories that keep even the most adventurous guests running from these historic halls. Consider the girl who fell to her death down the grand staircase. The brides who killed themselves in the bathtub of the same room exactly 20 years apart and the reports of Colonel Jesse Driscoll checking on his hotel, cigar still lit in his mouth. These spirits have haunted many people throughout the years of this hotel's operation. So many reports of sightings and feelings of presences have been had. Lots of people say that they'll feel someone over their shoulder, touching their hair, or a hand on their back, but when they turn around they don't see anything at all. A few rooms in particular have had some stark temperature changes happen to them, so much so that people have had to request to change rooms because it got so cold. Some people have even reported seeing an orb of light floating around the stairwell, never getting close enough to a person for them to touch it, but seemingly tempting them with its presence. This is your classic haunted hotel, and it checks all the boxes as being one of the most haunted spots in Texas. Number two on this list is the AI Engineering Building. Now these days when somebody says AI, you automatically think of artificial intelligence, but that's not actually what this AI stands for. It actually stands for Animal Industries. Texas Highways says, in 1959, Roy Simmons Foreman of the Meat Locker in Texas A&M University's old Animal Industries Building was performing a bit of a routine butchery on a slab of bacon. As he was cutting toward himself, the knife slipped in his hand, stabbing his leg near the groin. The blade cut open his femoral artery. His assistant, who'd stepped out for a moment, returned to find him bleeding out on the floor. An ambulance was summoned, but in vain. Simmons died before he could be removed from the building. Sims' death was a tragic accident, but it doesn't take much for a tragic accident to take on a more ghostly cast. In the daytime, we never thought much about any ghosts or strange occurrences, says Jeffrey Saville, a Texas A&M professor who was an undergrad and grad student in the 1970s. It was the nights when we were in the meat laboratory conducting research, usually by ourselves, that one would hear strange noises or feel like you weren't alone. Over the years, Saville says, students and custodians working in the bowels of the building have reported invisible footsteps, strange noises, and objects scattered far from their original resting spots. Saville attributes many of the stories to the natural spookiness of an old building and noisy machinery such as the elevator and the refrigeration compressors. A series of renovations of the building have turned the site of Sims' accident into an office space. Whether or not Sims' ghost roams the hallway, Saville says, one thing keeping his memory alive is the lesson offered by his death. It became a precautionary tale each semester as we visited with students about safety and meat cutting. It gets their attention when you tell them that somebody lost their life because of a knife accident. And I imagine it also gets their attention when his literal ghost is haunting them as they try to learn. If you're big into animal industries, then maybe look at some other schooling options before settling in on Texas A&M. And finally, number one on this list is Goatman's Bridge. Now this bridge isn't the greatest of all time like the name might suggest. In fact, it's probably one of the worst bridges of all time based on how freaking haunted it is. It was built back in 1884 and initially was used as a very popular spot to move cattle across. Over the years, a tragedy struck this bridge that has it being haunted by a dark and demonic spirit. It's a sad story where a colored goat farmer was murdered by some clansmen on this bridge many years ago. It's believed that the demonic spirit that haunts this place now is that of this goat farmer who was horribly wronged back then. Locals around this area do not go over this bridge at nighttime unless they really have to. So many sightings have happened over the years where people will go over the bridge and be met on the other side by said where people will go over this bridge and be met on the other side by this said angry spirit. He doesn't hold back against you either and will make you pay for the sins of others. Disappearances have happened at this bridge several times and people have reported being attacked but managing to get away with their lives. If it's nighttime, then do not go anywhere close to this bridge because 
it may actually be the last thing that you ever do. Number five, the Lexington. If you're a Texas native, then you probably don't need much introduction to the USS Lexington, formerly known as the Blue Ghost. The decommissioned aircraft carrier now stands as a museum, and it's thought by some to hold a lot more than some old war relics and stories. It might just contain some old souls who've never quite left its service. The museum's director of operations, Charles Russell, claims that the museum receives hundreds upon hundreds of reports of supernatural and any explicable activity and sightings every single year. Most famous among them is a benevolent ghost dressed in a sailor's uniform who aids guests in finding their way around the ship before vanishing back into the air. He describes one particularly vivid encounter with a spirit inhabiting his office where after losing six pens over the course of a week he found all of them arranged perfectly laying side by side in front of his keyboard. He reassures visitors that the spirits who live aboard the Lexington are playful not frightful. They're uh, more like Casper in that regard, I guess. Other stories tell sightings and reports of hearing lost souls running for cover after a torpedo attack, describing running sounds and other strange noises in the hangar bay. The paranormal tour guide aboard the Lexington describes it as, this was their home and they don't want to go anywhere else. I kind of get it, you know? I don't want to live on an aircraft carrier, that seems pretty cool. I'd try to swing that as long as I could. Like most purportedly haunted locations, if finding something spooky in the cold steel of the Lexington truly interests you, the museum offers a paranormal investigation tour where guests can spend the night with their own equipment in the hopes of finding someone to trip up your EVP meter. And if that ain't enough for you and you're looking for something spooky from the confines of your own home, well, we can hook you up with that real easy. Click through on Top 5 Scary because we've got loads of videos about haunted spots, ghosts, schools, goblins, aliens, cryptids, conspiracies, and just about anything freaky you can think of. Stay subscribed, stay scared, but you know, stay watching this video as well, okay? We worked hard. Number four, La Carafe. La Carafe up in Houston looks unassuming at first. Looks like a pretty typical dive bar experience. Looks nice though, I definitely would like to go. But if you believe the rumors, allegedly this is one of the most haunted buildings in the entire state. The bar also is one of the oldest buildings in Texas as well, having been initially built sometime in the early 1800s. It's seen life as quite a few things, a pharmacy, an apothecary, a bakery, and eventually La Carafe. So it's not too surprising that in all of its years of service, picked up a few guests who uh, aren't ready to pay the bill and leave just yet. Many regular customers have a ghost story to tell you as well as the bartenders. Many report strange noises, a glass breaking mysteriously, some even seeing lipstick stains on a glass they're drinking from appear out of nowhere. Do ghosts have uh, germs? Is it safe to share a drink with a ghost? I don't know if I would do that unless we got to know each other a bit first and then hey, anything can happen. I'm open. The bar is said to be haunted by a former tender named Carl who frequent guests claim they can hear shouting out for last call still years after passing the bar. Some claim they can see Carl's silhouette through his second floor window. Another ghost said to haunt the premises is the lady in white who supposedly pushed attractive women down the stairs. Hardly a way to get them to like you, let me tell you from experience. She's thought to be the ghost of a woman who ran a cat house near the carafe. Believers say that they see orbs and mist in photos and feel cold spots all over. I guess you could say they serve up more than one kind of spirits. I'll see myself out. I'm sorry, that's not my best work. If you're ever in Houston and looking for a bit of spooky ambiance, definitely check out the carafe and all of its otherworldly guests. Just make sure to tip your ghost about 15%. Number three on this list is Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. The park is no longer functional and based on all of the incidents that went down here, that's probably a good thing. It all started in the 1700s when a settler Mitchell Clay and the local Shawnee Native Americans fought and ended with three of Clay's dying and lots of Shawnee warriors passing away as well. This was the inciting incident of the tragic movie that is Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Also 200 years later in the 1920s this land was bought and turned into an amusement park. The buyer wasn't aware of this history though and didn't realize the dark mark that had been left here by that battle so many years ago. There were a decent amount of tragic incidents that went down here while the amusement park was operational, but there are two that stand out as being the most stunning. 
The first one involved a young girl on the swings. While she was on the swings, a delivery truck, without seeing her, backed straight into her and she passed away. The second one involved someone who drowned in the swing pool because their arm got stuck in the drain. The amusement park had seen enough and shut down in 1966. It was roughly 20 years later that they discovered the history of this place and pieced it all together, assuming that a curse must have been responsible. Locals don't dare go to this place anymore for fear of this curse. It should also be noted that the few who have stepped foot on this place again have reported run-ins with that young girl who died so many years ago. It seems that this curse won't allow her spirit to pass on and now she wanders the area. I'm sure that there are a bunch of other amusement parks in West Virginia that are a lot more fitting and functional than this one. Highly recommend avoiding Lake Shawnee altogether. Number two on this list is West Virginia Penitentiary. Would this really be a most haunted place list if we didn't throw a prison on here? Paranormal activity usually favors places that have seen a lot of tragedies and sadness and this penitentiary has definitely had its fair share. This prison opened up in the 1860s and was active for 119 years before finally being shut down. In that time it saw over 100 executions, countless riots where people were either severely injured or died, fires, and an insane amount of human rights violations. All of this has led to what we have now, which is just a really haunted prison. Though the prisoners are gone, they're not forgotten, and by many accounts, the ghosts of some of the 998 men who died here still roam free. There's a shadow man that has been seen and even photographed. Staff of the prison have been accosted by unseen forces. Strange noises still echo throughout the cell blocks, and something dark lurks in the bowels of the building. That was a small passage from Moundsville Haunted History who are familiar with the prison. 998 men though. That's how many different individuals are thought to potentially haunt this place. That's literally a full on ghost army right there guys. This place must have been horrible if that many people's souls are left wandering around this space. If I was the owner of this spot, I'd do those 998 people a favor and just knock this place to the ground. Maybe then these ghosts can finally rest. And finally, number one on this list is Point Pleasant. This has got to be the top spot on our list just considering the amount of lore surrounding the creature here. The Mothman. If you're watching videos on this channel, then I imagine you're already probably familiar with what this creature is, but for those who aren't, the Mothman is a humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. Shayla Klein says, according to legend, Mothman is a black 10 foot creature with wings and red eyes. Articles and newspapers at the time were reporting that the monster was also commonly seen in the TNT area near town, with some locals speculating that perhaps people were really seeing cranes or owls and others wondering if the creature was created in some sort of mutation accident involving the chemicals associated with storing TNT. Regardless, legend has it that mysterious men in black suits began visiting the town shortly after the sighting reports. The most infamous sighting of Mothman was on December 15th, 1967. Locals said that they saw Mothman on top of or flying over the Silver Bridge, which was a suspension bridge over the Ohio River that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia, to Galopolis, Ohio. According to Mothman lore, shortly after the creature was spotted on the bridge, the bridge collapsed, resulting in the deaths of 46 people. An investigation into the disaster found that a fracture in a suspension chain was the cause. This is one of the most famous American urban legends ever. The amount of people who saw this creature during this period of time and the fact that high ranking secret officials started to investigate it all point to its legitimacy. It was active for about a year and then just totally disappeared though and nobody knows what happened to it. The leading theory is that the government was able to capture whatever it was and probably took it to a secret base to study it. If that's the case then Point Pleasant is most likely safe now but be wary of what's flying over top of you if you do decide to go here. Number five on this list is Woman Hollering Creek. The Woman Hollering Creek is a very scary and haunted place located very close to San Antonio. It's haunted by a very dangerous ghost of a woman. The legend says that a woman who was in a horrible marriage, one where her husband would sadly abuse her, started to lose her mind. She fell into a deep depression and in the creek that we're looking at, drowned her 
She did this right before she took her own life as well, making it one of the saddest tragedies in this region's history. Well, it seems that her spirit never actually moved on. Her ghost is believed to regret what she did and how it all happened and can't find peace. Her regret manifests itself in a very sick and scary way though. She misses her children, and it's believed that if a child is by the bank, she will grab them and bring them down to the bottom of the creek with her to be her friend. Sadly, as you may have guessed, this doesn't go well for whoever was taken. This is why parents warn their children about going near this place without their supervision. It's very likely that this legend is just a tale made up by parents to scare their kids into staying by their side. But considering the potential consequences, I wouldn't want to take the risk. Number 4 on this list is La Carafe. Most times, bars are a sanctuary. In fact, in the entirety of the time that I've been hosting on this channel, I don't know if I've ever talked about a haunted bar before. Hard to get a place haunted when everybody that goes there is usually drinking and having a good time. A haunted bar is exactly what we have with this entry though. Thrillist says, some bars have that special, boozy charm that keeps the wine flowing and customers returning. For La Carafe, however, their popularity lies within their infamous ghost sightings and architectural ode to the French Quarter. Built in 1847, this bar is said to be the oldest pub in the downtown Market Square district. Every inch of the Cozy Nook sports an eclectic history from the numerous black and white photographs on the walls to the tales of important figures such as Sam Houston being a regular guest there. And considering this building's antiquated age, it's no surprise that a couple of phantoms also call this place home. Among the rumored residents is a former bartender named Carl who still clocks in for his shift and keeps an eye on the establishment, especially on the second floor which is reportedly vacant after closing time. Customers have also reported glasses breaking, hearing heavy footsteps and eerie bangs, and sensing cold spots in the bathroom. This is definitely a weird one because nobody really knows why this place is as haunted as it is. Like, yes, the bar owner kind of makes sense, but from my reading, he didn't die in an unusual or tragic way by any means, just a normal passing. I suppose the good thing here is that these spirits don't seem to be particularly aggressive, and if I could just get a drink with some ghosts without fearing for my life, then I mean, that'd be pretty cool. However, ghosts are unpredictable to say the least, and I'm sure that there are plenty of other bars in Houston that aren't haunted where you could grab a beer. Coming in at 3, Droop Mountain Battlefield. On November 6, 1863, the Battle of Droop Mountain occurred in Pocahontas County, West Virginia during the American Civil War. Confederate forces engaged but failed to prevent Union forces under General W.W. W. Averill from a rendezvous with other federal troops in a joint raid on Confederate railways. Droop Mountain was one of the largest engagements in West Virginia during the war and essentially resulted in the Confederate collapse. The battlefield site is now preserved and administered by West Virginia as a state park, and the unknown confederate dead are buried in the confederate cemetery at Lewisburg. A wooden observation tower, hiking trails and picnic tables mark the grounds where the civil war soldiers fought, died and some say still remain. Many visitors have reported sounds of galloping horses and sightings of the ghosts of headless confederate soldiers, as well as one soldier lying asleep against a tree. Coming in at 2, Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. In the late 1700s, the Clay family moved to West Virginia, which is presently known as Mercer County. The Clay family, comprised of Mitchell and his wife, settled on an 800 acre farm and raised 14 children. However, in 1783, tragedy struck while Mitchell was out hunting. A few members of the Shawnee tribe killed two of the Clay children and burned another at the stake. In retaliation, Mitchell hunted down a handful of Native Americans and killed them. The land in turn became unoccupied for years, up until the early 1900s when Conley T. Snyder purchased the land and built a small amusement park on it. However, the amusement park had just as unfortunate luck as the Clay family. Family. The park featured a ferris wheel and a swing ride and was popular among locals, particularly families of coal miners who resided in the area. In the early 1950s, a young girl on the swing ride was killed when a truck delivering sodas accidentally backed into the ride, striking her. Another child also drowned in the swimming pool, which was subsequently filled in to prevent further accidents. During its operation, at least six people died at the park, which resulted in the park ultimately closing in 1966. In 1985, 
1995, Gaylord White, a former employee of the park, purchased the land with plans to reopen it. It happened for a brief period, that is, before the park closed again after a 1988 archaeological dig uncovered numerous Native American artifacts, as well as human remains on the property that had been buried prior to the arrival of the Anglo European settlers. In total, 13 skeletons were uncovered, mostly of young children. Perhaps the property is cursed, or perhaps it's just a series of unfortunate events. Who knows? But one thing is for sure, it is one of the most haunted places in the entire world. And finally, coming in at number one, the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. The Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, also known as the Western State Hospital, was a Kirkbride psychiatric hospital that operated from 1864 to 1994 by the government. Originally built by Richard Andrews, it was constructed from 1858 to 1881 and was originally designed to hold 250 people. However, it became overcrowded in the 1950s, with the hospital housing 2,400 patients, resulting in it being forcibly closed in 1994 due to changes in patient treatment. Following its closure, it was then purchased by Joe Jordan in 2007, and is open for tours and other events to raise money for its restorations. During tours of the facility, witnesses have reported door slamming, shadowy figures, and even blood curdling screams from within the building walls. The asylum has garnered such a spooky reputation, it has appeared on shows such as Ghost Stories, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and Paranormal Lockdown. It was also featured in Bethesda's 2018 video game, Fallout 76, under the name Fort Defiance, and acted as a base for the Brotherhood of Steel, one of the game's main factions. Number 5 on this list is the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Operating from 1864 to 1994, this asylum, like most of the entries on this list, has certainly been through the ringer. This place was meant to only house 250 people at its max, but on many occasions had over 2,400 people residing here. Everyone was crammed in like animals, and considering this building was never meant to see this many patients at once, the living conditions were pretty horrible. Whenever you cram that many people into a small space together, especially an asylum, some pretty nasty things will go down as well. Several murders have taken place here over the years, along with incidents of patients and workers taking their own life. The haunting of this location was pretty progressive and didn't come on all at once. Reports date back to the early 1900s and got increasingly more frequent as time went on. Eventually it became clear by the later 1900s that this was no longer a usable space and they needed to move on. This is why it shut down in 1994 and has no medical purpose at this point. In fact, now the only thing that it has is ghost tours. The owner of this place know the legends are far stretching with this asylum and intend to make a profit on it. The ghosts are decently friendly here, or at least for the most part aren't dangerous. However, there have been a few instances where individuals have been scared to a point of serious and significant trauma. If you do plan to go here, then make sure you have a thick skin and aren't frightened easily. Number 4 on this list is Haunted Harper's Ferry. Harper's Ferry is a small town in West Virginia that honestly looks like something out of a storybook. It's comprised of roughly 119th century restored buildings. As you can imagine, it's a very quiet town and there isn't too much of a big city vibe going on here at all. This place wasn't always quiet though. In the American Civil War, this town played a pivotal role and was fought over multiple times throughout the years. People believe that it was through the death during the Civil War that this place has developed an affinity to spirits. Deborah Block says, At the nearby True Treats Historic Candy Store, chocolate and other candies are brightly lit on tables and in baskets. The cute and welcoming shop is popular with visitors, hardly seeming like a place where a ghost would want to hang out. But store manager Tara Dockman, known as the ghost lady in town for her sensitivity to paranormal activity, says there are two ghosts who frequent the store, and she even knows one of them by name. The female has a white flowy gown and she goes to the top floor of the store where there are no customers, she explained. And Colby, a man, likes to show himself and usually shows a shoulder or a pants leg which you'll see walk across a room. They both like to throw candy around and slam doors on customers. Dockman said, Colby is a troublemaker who may also push people. She assured me that she had spoken to him about not bothering me while I was in the shop and was hiding in a corner storage area. 
Tara isn't some nutbag who's the only one who sees ghosts here either. Tons of people in the town have had run-ins with them. In fact, the biggest attraction this town has to offer are the ghost tours that highlight how haunted this place truly is. In third place, time to visit the Bodie State Historic Park. Formerly a genuine gold mining town located east of the Sierra Nevada mountain range in Mono County, California, and now a national landmark, it is known as one of the best preserved ghost towns in the world. It is named after W.S. Bodie, first name unknown, but rumored to be either William or Waterman, discovered gold in 1859 in an area now known as Brody Bluff. He tragically passed in a snowstorm that same winter and was never present for what came to be. According to pioneer Judge McClinton, the district's name was changed from the proper spelling of B-O-D-E-Y to B-O-D-Y, body, and then a few other phonetic variations to eventually become B-O-D-I-E after a painter in the nearby boomtown of Aurora lettered a sign as such. You know, an accidental typo that stuck through history. While the output from the mine is largely insignificant in terms of mining history, the violence and early endings to lives tell a different story. A particularly harsh winter between 1878 and 1879 claimed hundreds of lives, with many others perishing from falling timber and explosions underground. Bodie as a town grew to have a reputation for violence and lawlessness. And unlike other mining camps at the time, killings were daily events. Robberies, stage holdups, and fights happened at such a frequency that no complete record could be kept. Reverend F. M. Warrington would describe the area in 1881 as a sea of sin lashed by the tempests of lust and passion. The first of four mysterious fires tore through the business district in 1892, the next destroying the town mill in 1912, and yet another destroying the same mill again in 1898. The last of the unknown fires demolished most of what was left of the now ghost town in 19. 1932, taking way too many lives too soon in the process. When the last producing mine shut down after 1945, very few people were left living in what was left of the town, and all eventually met untimely ends. One man shot his wife unprompted, and three other men from the town took it upon themselves to take his life for that act. According to historians, the ghost of that man would visit the three men after his passing, shaking his fist and appearing as if he was cursing them out. Those men soon died of mysterious diseases and illnesses. Visitors to the area have reported meeting spirits that leave them feeling suffocated, seeing doors open and close on their own, and rocking chairs that may or may not have a menacing older lady staring them down, or even the empty chair rocking on its own. Nowadays, Bodie may be a tourist destination, but if you remove anything from the land, even so little as a pebble, you'll be cursed with remorse and tragedy. The park keeps a logbook of all letters and items returned to them, with each thief writing an apology note to Brody for what was taken. The curse is upheld by the ghosts of residents past who guard against thieves and protect the town's treasures. Coming in second place, we have the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles, which was renamed to the Stay on Main in 2011. Cited as one of the inspirations for American Horror Story, Hotel, its history includes multiple deaths by a single hand and more unexplainable horrors. The first documented end of life at the Cecil occurred on the evening of January 22, 1927, when Percy Ormond Cook, age 52 at the time, shot himself in the head while inside his hotel room after spending over $40,000 in an attempt to woo back his estranged wife and an attempt to buy happiness. The next death that was reported was in 1931, when a guest, W.K. Norton, passed in his room after taking poison capsules. Too many lives to list were self-taken at the height of the Great Depression in the 40s and 50s. In 1947, it was claimed that Elizabeth Short, otherwise known as the Black Dahlia, was spotted at the hotel days before her gruesome and unsolved end of time. On the topic of unsolved deaths, we move ahead to 1964, when a retired telemarketer named Pigeon Goldie Osgood, who had been a well-known long-term resident at the hotel, was found brutally ended in her room with said room having been ransacked. In the 1980s, the hotel was home for a few weeks to repeated ender of lives Richard Ramirez, nicknamed the Night Stalker. It's assumed that he engaged in most, if not not all of his killing spree while staying there, being convicted of 13 deaths total in 1989. A copycat of his, Jack Unterweger, stayed at the Cecil in 1991 and was responsible for the strangulation and death of at least three women of the night. The most recent death reported took place in 2013, when surveillance footage of Canadian student Elisa Lam behaving erratically in the hotel's elevator went viral. The video depicts Lam repeatedly pressing the elevator's buttons, walking in and out of the elevator, and was recorded shortly before her disappearance. 
months. After 19 days of being missing, her naked body was discovered in a water supply cistern on the hotel roof, following complaints from guests of odd tasting water and low pressure. And finally, in first place, we have the famed Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. It all began in 1881, when the passing of Sarah Winchester's mother, father-in-law, and husband, William Winchester, of the famed Winchester Repeating Arms Company, passed away in quick succession, leaving her with a very large inheritance, assumed to be around $20 million, which would amount to roughly $561.6 million today, and a 50% stake in the company, making her one of the wealthiest women at the time. After living in Connecticut for the majority of her life, a combination of an arthritis diagnosis and meeting with a medium convinced her to start a new life in California. She believed her family to be cursed by victims of the Winchester rifle, and began construction on what was originally a two-story, eight-room farmhouse, which she purchased in 1886. She and her late husband shared an interest in architecture, and after dismissing all the architects she originally met with, decided to do all of the home planning herself. She was known to rebuild and abandon construction if anything didn't meet her expectations, which resulted in a maze-like design. It is believed that said maze-like design was mainly intended to confuse and keep spirits from harming her and what was left of her family. According to paranormal investigators Mary Jo Ignafo and Joe Nickel, the bell tower built on the property was used to summon spirits, and Sarah was known to throw lavish parties for the beings she feared in an attempt to please them. It was reported in the San Jose News in 1897 that a seven-story tower was torn down and rebuilt 16 times. As a result of her expansions, there are walled-off exterior windows and doors that lead to nowhere, along with staircases that end suddenly, and as the house grew in size, up to five additional levels were added to the home. When the 1906 San Francisco earthquake hit, the damage to the home was quite extensive. The seven-story tower and most of the chimneys collapsed. An entire wing was destroyed, along with the third and fourth story additions, and pipes that were protruding from what were once window boxes. Before the earthquake, the house is believed to have had 500 rooms, and at this time of Sarah's passing in 1922, the house had 160 rooms, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 47 stairways, 47 fireplaces, 13 bathrooms, and 6 kitchens. Visitors to the house today have reported multiple instances of experiencing cold spots, footsteps, cooking smells, odd sounds, whispering, doors and windows slamming, and feelings of being watched. In fifth place, we have Preston Castle, also known as the Preston School of Industry in Ione. Opening in 1894 and named after state senator at the time, Edward Myers Prestonas, it was presented as an alternative to juvie, a place to send troubled boys to learn a new trade and avoid incarceration. To the general public, it quickly became known as the best reform school of its kind, where boys could grow their own food, raise livestock, learn farming trades and skills for, for self-preservation in the real world. Known as wards, minors under guardianship of the state, but not necessarily juvenile offenders, many boys passed from severe illnesses like tuberculosis or were simply killed by guards for reasons unknown. Records show that the initiation to the facility involved swimming through a pool filled with lye, and common discipline methods included starvation, isolation, public paddling, and lashings. A mass grave on the property contains at least 23 bodies of wards that were sent to be rehabilitated. Head housekeeper of the facility, Anna Corbin, was brutally beaten to death on February 23rd of 1950. Various students and members of the staff were suspects in her passing, but it remains unsolved. Visitors to the now landmark have reported meeting her spirit, which roams around the grounds with all the students that couldn't pass over. Physical representations of spirits at this location have included multiple slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and the feeling of being touched by a cold hand all common pranks that are meant to terrorize and discombobulate. In fourth place, we have the Los Coches Adobe in Soledad. Before the establishment even broke ground, back when the area was used primarily for mining, over 30 miners perished in a soil collapse, and visitors to the area have since reported hearing their cries for help from the now abandoned mine shaft, while feeling pressure on their chest and back as if they were being buried alive. The adobe itself is located on the side of Highway 101 the building being originally built in 1843 to be used as lodging for workers in the area. Between 1872 and 1886, Soledad served as the terminal station for the railway that connected to San Francisco. Legend says that the owner of the inn was responsible for ending the lives of multiple folks who stayed there, especially near the end of the inn being in use, by entering the rooms as they slept and slitting their throats before stealing their ridges in an attempt to keep the inn, well, afloat. Other spirits spotted on the property include, but are not limited to, a man hanging from a tree swaying in the wind, and a woman sitting while holding a pointer stick, 
with her mouth moving as if she's yelling at whoever spots her. It is reported that the wall between the living and the dead is so thin here that people who have stayed in recent history reported having the walls and surroundings inside of the building change them to match the settings of the once deadly inn before their very eyes. Those who have opted to go so far as to stay the night have often woken up with handprints on their chest or throat, a remnant of what came before. Number 3. The Driscoll Hotel The Driscoll Hotel is another shining spot in the state said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. Lone Star State, Lone Scare State more like. With how many ghosts are said to live in this place, it's hard to imagine that you'd even be able to get a free room. One of the more notable ones is the owner, the cowboy Jesse Driscoll himself, who built the place originally. Shortly after the hotel's construction, it said that Jesse came under very hard times. So desperate for money, Jesse gambled away the deed to the hotel in a game of cards and was forever swallowed by this guilt losing his cherished prize. It's said his spirit still resides in this hotel in the room looking out at 6th street and Brazos. A consultant once reported looking out of the window in this room and seeing a man dressed in old western attire puffing a cigar asking, hey fella, what are you doing in my room? When he flicked the lights on and off to make sure he wasn't seeing what he thought he'd seen, the varmint disappeared leaving behind only a trail of smoke. Another notable ghost guests like to talk about is the bride, the ghost of a distraught woman who ended her life in the early 1990s after her wedding was called off and she blew through all her money in a desperate coping attempt. I get it, I get it. Guests say that they see her ghost towing bags up and down the halls of the hotel still running mad. Now I'll leave you with one last good spooky story out of the Driscoll. There was actually so many for this one. Definitely read up on it at home or visit if you're nearby. It seems like there's a lot going on. There's a painting on the fifth floor. It's a painting of a little girl holding a bouquet of flowers in one hand and a letter in the other. Paranormal enthusiasts claim that this painting is the daughter of a US senator who passed away in a freak accident at the hotel and her spirit lingers on in the canvas. Guests claim that they can feel something tugging at their coats or legs when they walk on by. Oof, it's a little too interactive for me for an art experience. Number 2. The Oakwood Cemetery I gotta say a cemetery is a pretty classical location for something haunted to be happening. I think we all sort of suspect most cemeteries are haunted as is. I mean a couple thousand dead bodies all buried underneath the same plot makes my hair stand on end. I said I was gonna try not to do a southern draw but I swear it's coming on naturally, I'm sorry. Oakwood Cemetery in particular is well known as a haunted spot to those who believe. It was established sometime in the 1850s, though it's thought that earlier settlers were laid to rest there too. With 23,000 souls resting there, it's no surprise that there is a litany of spooky stories amongst the tombstones. Take a listen to some of the more notable ones I dug up for you. One in particular that gets retold is that of Eula Phillips, a young woman who was struck fatally with an axe on Christmas Eve. Not that there's ever a good day for that, but that's a pretty bad one. Her husband was found guilty, only to be exonerated later when it turned out that there was a series of victims all around the same area matching her profile. Eight others who all fell victim to the this is unbelievable that any newspaper ever printed this name. The servant girl annihilator. I I cannot believe they named him that. I've actually featured him in a video before. I can't quite remember the title of it, but click through on every single Top 5 Scary video until you find it. There are some theorists who suspect the Servant Girl Annihilator and the infamous Jack the Ripper are one and the same, and that guy just could not get enough traveling from country to country. Some local residents claim that Eula's ghost roams the cemetery, lost, afraid, and panicked, unable to come to terms with the vile means of her death. Another very notable ghost is that of Susanna Dickinson. When Lopez de Santa Ana attacked the Alamo, Susanna and her kin were brought into the garrison. The dust cleared and the battle was over, and Susanna met with Santa Ana, where he offered to take her and her children back to Mexico, but she declined, knowing it might even cost her her life. Surprised, Santa Ana spared her, and her account of the Alamo was crucial to understanding and remembering what happened there. Susanna was buried at a plot in Oakwood, and visitors say she constantly appears to strangers, telling her stories all these years on, still remembering the Alamo. And number 1. Yorktown Memorial Hospital About 80 miles southeast of San Antonio is Yorktown. 
a small community with a population that barely exceeds a couple thousand. Probably a good reason for that, because if the legends are to be believed, the hauntings at the Yorktown Memorial Hospital might be keeping people away. The hospital was built in 1951, where it operated for a bit, and was eventually took over by the Felician Sisters of the Roman Catholic Church, who kept the place running until late 1986 when it was abandoned, where it still sits today almost as if nothing's happened. It looks like everybody just packed up and left. It's said that over 2,000 people call Yorktown their final resting spot, with 500 of those all occurring during the small tenure of the nuns running the hospital. These days, of course, the hospital's sickly lime green walls don't really see a lot of patients, mostly just ghost hunters and seekers of the paranormal looking for something lurking left behind. And if the stories are true, this place is filled with restless ghosts. Explorers report everything from disembodied voices to sounds of wheelchairs creaking, mysterious flashes of lights, orbs, mists, cold chills, you know, the usual who's who greatest hits of haunted spots. Now, you don't even need to be told this place is haunted to worry about it. I mean, just look at it. The place looks like it's straight out of Silent Hill, down to the rusted pipes and leaky hallways, but don't fret. No, there are ghosts. One in particular is that of a late surgeon, one Leon Norirsky. He was infamous around the hospital for his sloppy handiwork, and was said to have lost a number of patients in his time, and his spirit as such has been cursed to wander the facilities endlessly. He keeps writing terrifying messages on the wall, but no one can read them because he's a doctor. That's not my best work. I'm, I'm really sorry. I should have. Some of these should have stayed on the the writing board. Another infamous ghost is that of Sally, a young girl who's said to still live in the hospital's halls, heard happily playing, jovially dancing around, and even asking explorers to read her her favorite story when she encounters them. I hope someone takes her up on that. Not me though. I, nothing personal. I just have like a policy about not reading stories to ghosts. Number five on this list is Villa Paula. This haunted place is located in Miami and has quite the interesting guest in the backyard. Thrillist says this stately white mansion was originally constructed as the Cuban consulate in the mid 1920s, home to Consul Domingo Millard and his wife. Paula. The Cuban born Paula was known to spend her days playing piano and drinking Cuban coffee until she died from complications from a leg amputation in 1932. Legend has it that Domingo interred his late wife in a sarcophagus laid in the backyard. The sarcophagus is still there now, covered by ficus tree roots and nearly impossible to reach. Whether or not it actually contains her mortal remains is debatable at best, but reports of her ghost persist. It's said her ghost is in different rooms there, says History Miami's Dr. Paul George. People who've lived at Villa Paula since have had existential kinds of experiences. Among them, phantom coffee smells and piano playing, a one-legged woman roaming about as well. So there is a literal sarcophagus just chilling in this person's backyard. Can you imagine having that just show up on the house listing, I'd be like, um, no, we are not okay with that. I'm kind of surprised that no one has gone to go deal with the sarcophagus before. I mean, you can't just leave this thing down there like that and expect the ghost to just go away. I would imagine that Paula's spirit is probably tied to the sarcophagus and in turn it's tied to the area. Granted, I do kind of understand why no one wants to dig it up. Think about all the crazy stuff that's happened with the pyramids. You dig up this sarcophagus and you might end up being cursed for life, which is obviously something that nobody wants. But now we're left in this awkward place where we can't get rid of the ghost, but at the same time can't live here either. That's why I'm recommending to all of you watching, just avoid Villa Paula altogether. Number four on this list is the Blue Anchor Pub. So this is an interesting one because this pub didn't actually start in Florida. Thrillist says this pub was built in 1840s London during Jack the Ripper time, so it should be no surprise that it's haunted. The story goes that the bar was raised in London, but it's 
wooden interiors were sent to New York City and then onto this sleepy So Florida town in 1996. Little did anyone know that the pub's original elements came with the ghost of Bertha Starkley, a cheating wife who was murdered by her husband. Today, she can be heard rattling pots, knocking things over, and wailing in the middle of the night at the Blue Anchor. Every night around 10 p.m., the time that she was murdered, Bertha likes to remind everyone she's still here so the current owners ring the ship's bell to scare her away. So first thing, I've never actually heard of that before where they take a building from one continent and then just decide to move it over to another continent. This bar must look pretty cool on the inside to go to all that trouble though. Obviously this was a bit of a mistake and everyone would have been better served if we relocated this thing straight to the dump. Bertha doesn't care if it's in London or America or anywhere. As long as the structure of this pub is still intact, her ghost will still be floating around, which makes it very hard to enjoy a night out at this place. Like imagine drowning several pints, going to take a piss, and then getting ambushed by some 1800s ghost in the bathroom with your pee pee hanging out. Like, I don't know if I'd ever be able to recover from that, folks. Coming in at number three, we have Van Gelder Hotel. This is another hotel on our list, and it's the Van Gelder Hotel, which is another very old building known for paranormal activity due to the many people who have visited and even locals. The hotel was built in 1916 in downtown Seward, Alaska. It originally was built as an office building, but then was converted into apartment buildings, and then finally into her hotel. The hotel has hasn't changed much since when it was built, just small touch ups and interior changes have been done to keep the authentic feel of this very old hotel. The most popular ghost story from this hotel is that of Fanny Guthrie Bam, a woman who died in this hotel in the 1950s and is said to haunt room 202. She is described as a younger woman who has long blonde hair and wears a blue dress. Fanny is one of many ghosts that haunt the hotel, but the only one that can actually be identified. It is believed that Fanny was shot in the head by her drunk husband one night and she still roams the hotel to this day. An eyewitness account who was staying at the hotel in 2001 remembers that one night at 1.21am she was awoken to the whole building shaking and heard someone running up and down the stairs. The guest then asks a worker at the hotel if there was just an earthquake to which the worker told her no. The customer had actually experienced the ghost of Fanny reliving her murder. Along with Fanny there have been sightings of a lone unidentifiable man who is said to appear only as wisps and orbs as well as sightings of two men wearing bowler hats and can be seen standing behind the front desk and also three children can be seen running from room to room giggling when there are no guests staying at the hotel. If I were you I would avoid staying at this place at all costs. Wish I knew where this hotel was. I stayed at a hotel in Seward, Alaska with my family once and we had a weird situation but it was just us. We were just the weird ones. We went fishing. We were fishing all day, getting rockfish. We're out in the waters. <laughs> And then we went back to the hotel we were staying at and we had planned to go out for dinner but we were like let's just take a light nap and we all woke up at like 2, 3 a.m. in our coats, jackets, like it was like I don't, it was f***ing weird, like. <laughs> Coming in at number two, we have Tonsina River Lodge. Next on this list is the Tonsina River Lodge, which is located in well Tonsino, Alaska, and is part of the Copper River Valley area. The lodge is considered to be the centerpiece of Tonsina Valley. Originally named the Donaldson Roadhouse, it was built by Jim Donaldson in the 1900s, and then later in 1902, Jake Nafstad and Fred A. Martin added onto the main roadhouse building and ultimately changed the name to the Tonsina Roadhouse. It would later go under another name change, the Upper Tonsina Roadhouse house and underwent some more accommodations which could house up to 60 guests. This hotel is very historic and actually was once a brothel before it had eventually become the Tonsina River Lodge. The most popular ghost in the lodge is Charlie who had been seen by many different workers at the lodge as well as tourists staying there. There are a few different stories of what happened to Charlie, one being that he was wanted for murder in Canada and went on the run. When authorities caught up to him he resisted arrest and was shot and died in room 18. Another account says that Charlie got rejected from his love interest and having nothing to live for, he ended up taking his own life in room 18 and to this day he is seen wandering up and down the hallways looking for his beloved. 
A third version about Charlie is that during the Great Depression, Charlie was living in Seattle and not being able to find work, he boarded a ship and decided to go to Alaska, eventually making his way to Tonsina and getting a job at the Roadhouse. He really enjoyed his job, but unfortunately, Charlie ended up passing away in room 18. His body was buried on a hill behind the Roadhouse. People believe that Charlie was so happy with his life at the lodge, even in his afterlife, he never left. Many people who have come in contact with Charlie say that he is a very friendly and peaceful ghost, and workers and tourists say they were not feared by Charlie's. So, if you're intrigued by Charlie and his story, you can go visit Tonsina, Alaska and stay in his old room. And finally, coming in at number one, Hilton Anchorage Hotel. The Hilton Anchorage Hotel is considered to be a very famous place in the United States. Located in downtown Anchorage in 1916, it was first owned by Frank Reed. Many ghosts have come to stay in this hotel since the gold rush and have never left. One ghost that frequents the hotel is the first chief of police in Anchorage, who often is seen in the night hours around the hotel. The story says that he was shot during the prohibition days with his own in the alleyway of the hotel, and was then dragged into the hotel to try to recover from his wounds, but would soon pass away there. Another ghost that is often seen roaming the hotel is a bride. Many visitors have seen her tall silhouette, dressed in white and dark hallways and mirrors throughout the hotel during the evening hours, as well as the ghost of a little boy roaming the halls of the hotel. Guests who have stayed at the hotel have reported frequent ghost sightings in various rooms such as 217, 215, 205 and 202. Over the many years, there have been so many ghost sightings at this particular hotel that the hotel even keeps a log at the front desk of all the eerie experiences that have happened to guests and workers. The hotel has truly survived the test of time after going through the 9.2 magnitude Good Friday earthquake in 1964, which is said to be the most powerful recorded earthquake in North America and the second in all of the world. But soon after this is when the paranormal accounts started flooding in. Even through all the tragedy that downtown Anchorage has gone through, this hotel has stood its ground and in 2016 this hotel celebrated 100 years of business. Number five on this list is the Molly Brown House. If you live in Denver, then there is no way that you aren't familiar with this haunted place. Thrillist says you've no doubt heard of the Molly Brown House and likely passed it on the street once or twice too. Molly Brown was a notable member of Denver's elite and perhaps known best for being a Titanic survivor, and despite allegedly living a relatively happy life, visitors to the museum and staff have reported quite a bit of strange happenings. Some have smelled what's believed to be husband JJ Brown's pipe or have witnessed lights off and on the fritz, and staff have reported furniture being seemingly rearranged. Sometimes figures can even be seen roaming the house. A visit is worth it alone for the history, but the potential for getting a bit spooked or walking into a cold spot is definitely an added bonus. We once again have one of those locations where no one has any idea why it's haunted. It just is. Maybe it's the connection to the Titanic that has got this place acting funky. Obviously, that was a very unnatural occurrence and took the lives of tons of people in a very sad way. So I could believe that the Titanic and the survivor of the Titanic plays some role into why this place is haunted the way that it is. Good news is that this isn't the worst haunting that you can run into. Like yes, you will get a little scared for sure. You might smell something funny or have a ghost pull something on you or even maybe have small valuables go missing. But ultimately, you probably shouldn't be dragged to the underworld here by some shadow demon or anything like that. So I guess if you were to visit any place on this list, then this one wouldn't be the worst. Just be prepared for what's coming, because if you aren't, then it could leave you with some serious mental trauma. Number four on this list is Phantom Canyon Road. You need to be very careful on this road because there is a good chance you could suffer a serious crash if you aren't. Thrillist says a haunted road is one thing, but a haunted road in Colorado means you're likely on the edge of a mountain and at some serious elevation. Phantom Canyon Road is a detour off the Gold Belt Tour byway connecting Cripple Creek and Florence and was originally the railroad for that route. As you drive along, you can 
clearly see the ghost towns of Wilbur, Adelaide, and Glenbrook, and legend has it that the reason for Phantom Canyon's name is credited to sightings of a man wearing a prison uniform walking along the tracks in the 1890s. The man supposedly had been executed at the Colorado State Penitentiary a few days earlier. So yeah guys, you better have your wits about you, cause if you don't, this ghost might come out and startle the crap out of you, and then the next thing you know, you're gonna be face deep into a tree somewhere. It also just adds to the horror ambiance that you're driving past several ghost towns along the way. Like of course, they just had to be on the side of the road as you're also getting stalked by this ghost prisoner. No one really knows what this prisoner wants with you, but let's face it, I can't imagine it's good. My dude was executed back in the day, so for one, what he did was probably pretty bad to warrant a punishment like that, and then secondly, he literally got executed and I can only guess that his his ghost probably isn't too pleased about that. Y'all need to be especially careful if you're driving down this road, cause at any point this guy could pop out. Coming in at number 3 we have the Golden North Hotel. The Skagway Golden North Hotel may look like a classic hotel located on the main street, but it has seen tragedy and has the ghost to prove it. People say this place is haunted by a lady who passed away many years ago. She is bound to room 23 on the third floor, but her presence can be felt in the area around the building. The locals tell the story of how this woman became bound to room 23. It's unknown in what year the story takes place, but it was many years ago. The woman was visiting the hotel with her husband. They visited the area so her husband could go on a gold expedition. The expedition was over a number of days to possibly weeks and the wife was to stay at the hotel and explore the local area. The day arrived and the husband left on his expedition, leaving his wife alone. Not long after the husband had left, the woman caught pneumonia. She became sicker and sicker. There was no one in the area able to help her. She had no way to get to a local doctor with no knowledge of the area. She sadly passed away in little over a week due to her illness. When her husband returned, he was heartbroken to find his wife had passed. She had been laying in their room for weeks awaiting his return. The locals were shocked to hear what happened and horrified no one had heard her cries and helped her survive her ailment. Since then she has been bound to the room. Other guests have heard sounds coming from the room which remains empty. The spirit can be heard coughing or choking. Some have said they saw her from the window of the hotel when walking around the area late at night. Some have even heard her cries for her husband. When anyone tries to investigate the room they just find it empty and cold. The cold of the room takes over you as soon as you open the door. You can feel you are in the presence of a spirit and are overcome with sadness. Come in at number 2 we have Independence Mine. The Independence Mine, now known as the Independence Mine State Historic Park, is the site of a former gold mining operation. It is located in Palmer, Alaska. The mining history in the area dates back to at least 1897. The mining town now sits abandoned. The operations were temporarily halted in 1950 with the plan to eventually resume operations. They were never able to resume the operations. This resulted in a well preserved collection of mining equipment and buildings. Although weather has taken its toll, many of the buildings still stand today. As we know with many mines there are often accidents due to the dangerous nature of the work. Parts of the mine would often collapse. The mine is now a big tourist site as a look into the life and work of miners in 1897. The visitors have reported a lot of paranormal activity while touring the facility. Almost everyone who visits the mine sees some form of activity there. There are many apparitions that appear. They walk around the mine as if they were doing their usual day's work. Some have even seen cigar smoke coming from certain locations. You can smell and see the smoke but there are no cigars in the area that could be making the smoke. Tour guides have noted that they often have the feeling of being followed. They can feel themselves being watched each time they tour the facility. Some have even found footprints that don't belong to them or any anyone in their group. Although there is a lot of paranormal activity in the area, tourists still come to see the remains of the mining town. The ghosts seem to be well intended. They may merely be echoes through time of the souls who passed here. As far as we know, there have not been any visitors who have been hurt during their visit. I would still be wary of visiting here though. Finally, in at number 1 we have At The White House. At The White House was built in 1902 and is now on the National Historic Register due to how long it has been standing in the community. It has had many issues since 
since it was built. It was originally built as a hospital, then it was used as a daycare center, and today is used as a hotel. Any building that was used as a historic hospital has seen a lot of tragic passings. When the building was used as a daycare center, there was a tragic fire. The building caught fire in the 1980s. It was fully restored following this. During the fire, the young woman who owned and ran the daycare was trapped inside. After ensuring all of the children were safe, she became trapped and unfortunately perished. Since the fire, her apparition has appeared around the home. Most guests believe her to be a kind spirit but she does bring on the feeling of dread and terror when she is in your presence. Guests at the hotel have claimed to be startled awake by the young woman standing at the foot of the bed. Once they wake up and become frightened, the spirit usually disappears. Workers at the hotel claim that she appears to show more interest in families with children. She reportedly had a love for looking after children, and even in death she wanted to ensure their safety during their stay at the hotel. It is unknown what room she was trapped in during the tragic fire, but there are numerous cold spots around the hotel. Others have heard faint screams and cries coming from certain rooms. She is hailed as a hero for saving all of the children during the fire, but guests are still frightened when greeted by her ghosts in the early hours of the morning. Coming in at number 5 we have Westmark Fairbanks Hotel. Starting off with the Westmark Fairbanks Hotel located in downtown Fairbanks, Alaska, this is considered to be the finest hotel in Fairbanks. It was built by the former governor Walter Hickel in 1987, but has gone through some transformations over the years, but is still considered to be a go-to stay for couples, families and business professionals. Not only is it a hub for tourists to stay, it also intrigues paranormal investigators who believe this hotel is indeed haunted. According to locals around the area, they have claimed to see an apparition-like figure that resembles a huge man that spends the night in room 277. He likes to make himself known by pushing the beds, poking guests in the shoulder and even ruffling up the carpets in the room. Another ghost that is often seen at the hotel is that of a little girl who is seen roaming up and down the hallways and sometimes she is heard laughing. Also, an apparition of a male often appears in the elevator or walks around the main entrance of the hotel. Guests who have stayed at the hotel have also claimed to have seen doors opening and closing on their own. Many paranormal investigators and enthusiasts are currently exploring this so-called haunted hotel. So more about their findings should come out in the near future, so if you plan on exploring this haunted hotel, please proceed with caution and get on the internet and share your findings to other ghost enthusiasts. Coming in at number 4 we have Gakona Lodge and Trading Post. Gakona Lodge and Trading Post is located in the Cooper River Valley in South Central Alaska and is the oldest roadhouse in operation in the whole state, so you know that it has a lot of history and stories from locals and people who have stayed at the lodge. Jim Doyle built the lodge, an ice house and a storage shed in 1904 and was named Doyle's Roadhouse. The original building still exists on the property today but are no longer in use. Before selling the lodge in 1912, there are rumors that notorious serial killer known as the Blueberry Kid even stayed at the lodge. Between the selling of the lodge in 1912 to about 1920, the lodge went through many different owners until a Norwegian man and his wife bought it until selling it once again in 1976 to Jerry and Barbara Strang, who were among the first owners to report paranormal activity on the property. Barbara had a strange event happen when some of the kitchen workers had actually tried to contact a spirit in the lodge when the power just suddenly went out. Yes, the power did sometimes go out in the lodge because of the harsh weather, but Barbara definitely believes that this time it was in fact the work of the paranormal. Another story is about a man named John Paulson who would frequent the lodge not only as a customer but also a business partner as well. John always stayed in room number 5 and to this day people report hearing stomping coming from that particular room. John was an avid smoker and stories from people that stay at the lodge today say they can always smell tobacco coming from room 5, even though there has been a no smoking policy at the lodge for almost a decade now. If you are brave enough to visit this paranormal lodge, you could even ask to stay in room 5 and maybe be able to hear the stomps and smell the tobacco. Number 3 on this list is Central City Masonic Cemetery. Of course we had to have a cemetery on this list. No haunted place list would be complete without at least one of them. Thrillist says, founded as a mining town in the late 1800s, Central City is now known as a destination for those looking to head to the hills for a gambling fix and the casinos that now dot the area. But one thing hasn't changed. The woman in black who twice a year appears in this hill 
hilltop cemetery above the town. Known as the Columbine Lady, she comes to visit the grave of John Cameron, a prominent former resident of Central City who died in 1884. Some believe she is his fiancée, appearing to leave flowers for her lost love on November 1st, the anniversary of Cameron's death, and April 5th, a date for which the significance remains a mystery, much like the woman herself. This place is safe to go to if of course you do not go during these times. She's been coming for a long time and anyone who tried to interfere with her has had to pay the price. Now people kind of suspect that she was in a relationship with John Cameron, but there's also another theory. Many people think that John actually wronged her in his life and that this woman in black comes twice a year to double check that John is still dead and hasn't come back to life by some means. Pretty scary tale for sure. One that you probably don't want to get involved with. Number two on this list is the Broadmoor. Located in Colorado Springs, this hotel would be freaking awesome if it wasn't so haunted. Thrillist says this sprawling five star hotel has a lot to offer for anyone seeking a relaxing and indulgent getaway. But along with the golf course, spa, and nearby zoo, there's one feature you won't find in any brochure. Staff and guests alike have reported the presence of a woman, often in the penthouse where Julia Penrose, co-founder of the property, once lived. While not confirmed, Penrose's death is said to have been surrounded by a strange occurrence in which she went missing and was later found, confused and shaking in the woods nearby with no memory of how she got there. She passed away a week later and perhaps her spirit remains watching over the property and seeking answers about her own mysterious death. Now I am wondering, man, how did Penrose die? Like this whole story feels like a movie or something like that. I truly think somebody needs to get in here and investigate what the heck happened here. Cause like, should we be scared of the region because this is gonna happen again? Was Julia doing something specific before she disappeared and should we avoid doing that thing? There are just so many questions that need to be answered here and sadly I can't do it from the comfort of Toronto. That being said, I'm also not trying to end up like Julia and therefore I will be leaving this job to somebody far more qualified. And finally number one on this list is the Highlands Ranch Mansion. A truly picturesque mansion, one that's been standing for over 100 years and one that's home to a ghostly spirit. Thrillist says this sprawling stone mansion built in 1891 is often rented for weddings and events due to its impressive structural beauty and picturesque prairie views. But it's also a historic property and somewhat of a museum of the times with a bit of paranormal activity sprinkled in. The ghost of Julia Kistler, daughter of F. Kistler, who bought the property in 1926 is said to haunt the home with visitors and staff alike reporting hearing a woman sobs, seeing a silhouette figure moving about when the mansion was otherwise vacant, and lights sporadically turning on and off. I don't know about you guys, but during my wedding ceremony, I want to hear beautiful sounding music, not the sobs of some ghost woman thing. Apparently she's crying all the time and this woman's emotions are not something to play with. There's a story where once several children were playing around here. There was a wedding ceremony scheduled here for later that day and the children were off doing what kids do before the proceedings got underway. They ran into this ghost crying and then they started to make fun of her. They were rude and definitely unkind but they also didn't deserve what she did next. It's said that in a fit of rage she flew inside their bodies and possessed each and every one of them for a short time showing them things that were truly terrifying. Things that have ultimately changed those boys' lives and altered their mentality forever. Any ghost that's capable of doing something like that, that's one that I don't want to be around. Coming in at number five, Silver Bow in Bed and Breakfast. The Silver Bow Bed and Breakfast is located in Juneau, which is the capital city of Alaska. The inn is more famously known for its bakery that was founded in 1898 by the original owner, Gus Messerschmidt. This is the oldest bakery in Alaska and some say it it is the best. Although people travel from far to taste the treats in the bakers, there are reports of paranormal activity in the inn above. The original owner and founder of the inn reportedly still haunts the premises. The story goes that the owner loved his bakery and inn. He spent his whole life dedicated to creating the finest bakery. From the day it was built, he spent all of his time here. He loved welcoming the customers and ensuring everyone enjoyed their stay. Inevitably, having spent all of his time at the inn, he was here when he passed away in 1938. 
gate. He was so dedicated in life it seems his soul was tethered to the place in death. Since he passed away, guests of the bakery and inn have reported a lot of paranormal activity. The most commonly reported sighting is of Gus opening his shop early in the morning. People have seen a figure matching his description walking around the halls as he once did to prepare for his day. This is not the only thing that guests have noticed, some people have reported knocking on their bathroom door. When they go to investigate who it is, there is no one there but they have a feeling of being watched. Many believe this is Gus checking up on the guests, he also wanted to ensure everyone staying there was happy and people believe this is a sign that he's still checking in on the guests today. Coming in at number 4, the Hotel Captain Cook. The Hotel Captain Cook, located in Anchorage, is notorious for its paranormal spirit which has been nicknamed the White Lady. People often take ghost tours of the hotel hopeful of a chance to meet this famous spirit. Although the origins of the ghost are mostly unknown, from her behaviour it appears she passed away in the women's bathroom, or at least in the area which may have been home to something else before the hotel was built. The locals explain how she is bound to this place and is unable to pass on. She could possibly be cursed as she seems to stressed about her situation. Since the hotel opened there was a lot of paranormal behaviour in the area. She would break the glass of the mirrors in the ladies bathroom or swing open the doors to scare those inside. The hotel management had to step in when one guest used the bathroom stall located at the very end of the ladies room. While in the stall she felt something fall around her neck and start to get tighter and tighter. The woman panicked and ran from the stall. As soon as she left the cubicle the sensation stopped. Since then the bathroom has been bolted shut as to stop this from happening to anyone else. She does seem to be mostly contained to this stall but there are still paranormal happenings. Lights turn on and off on their own, no one has been hurt since the spirit was locked away but I would still stay far away from this hotel. Unless you're looking for an angry spirit, this is a hotel that should not be on your list of destinations to visit. Although, my parents were there and it's fine, you yeah. know, they're gooch, they're gooch gang. Number 3 on this list is St. Augustine's Lighthouse. Ah yes, the haunted lighthouse. A true classic. Thrillist says St. Augustine's iconic lighthouse is a Florida landmark built in 1874. But climb up its 219 steps and it's not just the views that will take your breath away. First, there's the ghost of Joseph Andrew, the original lighthouse keeper who fell to his death while painting the 165 foot tower. Then there are the Pity's two daughters who were playing with a building cart when it broke loose and slid into the nearby bay, drowning them both. While the girls giggle and run up and down the lighthouse steps, Joseph has been reported smoking cigars at the top of the lighthouse, keeping watch over his forever home. You know guys, if I had to be a ghost, then being Joseph wouldn't be the worst. I get to look out at the pretty scenery at the top of my lighthouse where hardly anyone bothers me and I get to smoke cigars all day. Like obviously I wouldn't want to be a ghost, but if I had to be then this wouldn't be that bad. Either way, I'm not a ghost now, I am very much a human being and if I want to stay a human being then I recommend avoiding this place. It can obviously be very jarring to see two little ghost girls running around and even even though all of these ghosts are supposed to be pretty chill, we know that the paranormal can be unpredictable. I'm sure that there are tons of other non-haunted Florida lighthouses around if you're really pining for a good view. Number 2 on this list is Fort East Martello. If you don't like dolls, then you really won't like this one guys. Thrillist says, if there is one rule all Floridians follow, it's do not mess with Robert the doll. The 4 foot figurine has terrorized anyone who hasn't taken him seriously since he was gifted to artist Robert Jean Otto in 1904. Otto blamed any mischievous act around him on Robert the doll, effectively coining the oft-repeated Robert did it mantra. The doll currently holds court inside Fort East Martello where he lives inside a glass case surrounded by a constant soundtrack of haunting xylophone music. The room evokes a heavy air immediately upon entering and the walls are papered with apology notes from cocky tourists who have dared cross the world's most haunted plaything. Even the Prince of Darkness himself 
Ozzy Osbourne, felt Robert's wrath when he suffered a series of health mishaps shortly after dissing the doll on his reality show. I don't like dolls, folks, especially the haunted variety, so this entry obviously had to make the list. Clearly, it curses you after you see it because people literally have to come back here and ask for its forgiveness. I don't know if the notes work or not, but I guess that's all you can do when you're dealing with a haunted doll. Hopefully this doll can just chill out and stop haunting people, but in the meantime, I just flat out avoid going to this place in Florida altogether. And number one on this list is Casa Monica Resort and Spa. It really sucks that this place is so haunted because it's truly beautiful. Thrillist says St. Augustine's fanciest hotel is also its most haunted. In fact, this five-star Mediterranean revival haunt is a hotbed of spectral activity. Children are heard running along along the fourth floor, but no one is there. The radio in the Ponche de Leon suite randomly comes on, but no one's there. Guests of room 411 wake up to people staring at them, but no one's there. But it's the three-story Flagler suite high in the tower that's most haunted. Maids have seen a child's handprint appear on the first floor bathroom mirror, and after knocking, one heard a man say, we've been expecting you from an empty bedroom. Its spookiest claim to fame, however, is the male ghost staring out of the top tower window. He's believed to be the ghost of one of two people, either Franklin Smith, the architect who built the hotel, or Henry Flagler, the man who purchased it. I personally don't care if it's the architect, the man who purchased it, or God. Anyone who says, I've been waiting for you as I enter an empty bedroom, it's not the type of individual I want to be around. Also, where are these children coming from and what are those sounds? Okay, so you want to tell me a scary story where the architect of the building fell in love with his work and then when he died, his ghost stayed here. All right, fine, I can buy that, I can believe that. But like, what are the children doing here? What do they have to do with this place and the architect? Maybe this is just one of those spots where it doesn't matter what happened here, it doesn't matter what will happen here in the future, it's just always destined to be haunted. 